and maybe Henry's mic. One, two, three. One, two, three. Yeah, you didn't need to look at it like that. All right, but now we're good. Looking at it makes it cooler. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hey, Welcome Joe to Gunner episode first. two. I'm bringing it back. <laughs> I mean, pretty big volume for the first. <laughs> yeah, so, right? right. What are we at? How many followers? 29 subscribers on YouTube. 29. I appreciate you guys. 48 followers on Instagram. Yeah. Respect. Right. Yeah. Remember, working on some things here. When you're not talking, back off the mic. When you are talking, get on the mic. Duly noted. <laughs> All right. Yeah, no, but I do want to hop in on something. <laughs> God. So how'd you lose your uh, wallet today, Noah? If you must know, I was dog sitting this weekend, and then what ended up happening was uh, I came home to watch my brothers, and I stopped and got gas. I uh, got home, started playing 2K with my little brother, and then when I went to leave, obviously I need my you know ID, and I was like, oh, it's it's not there. I was like, it's just not there. So I start looking everywhere I was. I looked in the basement, looked in the... Uh, Looked in my room, looked at, uh, in the family room. Those were like the only three places I went and uh, could not find it. Could not find it. Yeah, well, it explains why we're recording now at 10 o'clock at night again. So that's great. Actually, I, I would like to say I was here at 7 or 7.30. So I don't really understand why we're starting at 10. Movie night's more important. We were watching Star Wars. Yeah. We've all seen Star Wars probably about seven Except times. Ethan. Okay, fine. Sure, fair, fair, fair. Still taking Ethan's, you know, Star Wars V card. Fair enough. Yeah, exactly. So you can always move your mic up a little bit too, so you don't have to duck into yeah, it so much. I don't, I don't know. I'm just weird. Yeah, feeling it. So uh, Anthony, got your rep in your 22 hoodie on today. How'd you guys do? 25th place. How'd you get 25th place? 25th place. He's done a couple number, laps huh? most of the race. Huh? He's done a couple laps for most what of the race. What happened to him? Uh, his car just decided to not go anymore. So much so that he was down laps. We were in the watching race. Star Wars. I wasn't watching the race. But oh. what I know is that his car just uh, got really slow. His car got really slow. Are you serious? Yeah. I don't know. I just saw the Instagram. <laughs> no, post. something <laughs> something had to have happened. Something probably did. Something had to happen. <laughs> I don't want to say anything, but the guy had a shot to win it today. Did led laps. Came in third place. He was so. number one Toyota though, so I won that. In yep, fantasy. was fantasy points for me too. Number yeah. one Toyota. Joe Gibbs Racing. I'm so. Lost. Yeah, no, it doesn't like to watch NASCAR. Well, he would like to watch NASCAR. I, I would like to get into it. I just you gotta know. get your booty up here a little bit faster on the weekends. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Around three o'clock on Sundays. Yep. Three o'clock on Sundays. Duly noted. Duly yep. noted. Good. <laughs> all right. Uh, well, all right. So we got the wallet ragging. We got no NASCAR ragging. What else is next? What what what's the what's on the shit list for Noah? The shit list for Noah. Um. Let's think. The Caseville shirt? I'm rec- I, representing. I re- if you don't like the shirt, I mean, I don't understand. No, the shirt's great, is. but I probably wouldn't do light blue with the green hat. Gotta, re- gotta represent. You gotta be right. You have the gray hat, though. I know, but I wore the gray hat last week. Had to change it up. Great Green hat. Green hat. All right, I feel it. Dollar sign. A little, a little luck of the Irish. Is that what Hi. business people do now? I'm not a business major. I'm a mechanical engineering major. No, no, you're a business guy. Though. Business minor. Yeah. <laughs> Two business minors. Oh, wow. So big business guy. Though. Oh, so yeah. he's, he's, he's mechanical engineering major and Excel sheet extraordinaire on the side. <laughs> We've gone over this multiple times. Ethan Van Colley is the reason I'm at this school. Yeah, okay. So now that I know how to use like Excel or Google Sheets, does that mean I'm allowed to be a business minor too? Hold on. Your LinkedIn, uh, I believe, didn't you have to take a pretest to get on your LinkedIn and you proved that you weren't, <laughs> that you weren't <laughs> Excel then, efficient? Then he goes on his LinkedIn and says, I'm Excel efficient. Then it tests him and catches him in a, in a okay. fat L. I know how to use some commands, and then all of a sudden these commands were like out of nowhere. But some commands include highlighting the entire column and adding them, and that's about it. Yeah, he can find the sum. So how, no. do, how, do, how do you to do arithmetic do between columns? I made an entire spreadsheet that showed us what you owe for how much food you bought. Because I don't know the first thing about Excel, but I'm never going to own up to saying that I know how to use it. Oh, I'm definitely not as good as I could be, but I know how to do most things or some things. All right, let's just a little heads up. Uh, I can see that our mics are picking up when you're talking, and my mic is picking up when you're talking. So let's try to. Talk. I'm not sure if it's closer to the mic or just a little more quiet. Yeah, definitely just bring it down a little bit. Sounds good. 
But um, yeah, honestly, I don't know where you guys are getting off saying business people use Excel. I feel like engineers are probably the Everyone. ones that use Excel more. Everyone uses Excel. Well, duh. That's obvious. Except for like it language arts minors or majors or made up majors. It, it depends what business. Wow. <laughs> Jeez. Throwing shade early. I know. <laughs> Come early. on. Um, it is, it's 9.30. It's still early for that. I guess it just depends on what the field of business you're getting into. If you're an account, like an account, you know. Counting major. If you're in that field, then Excel is your best friend. But you know, if you're an, an economist, maybe if who knows? If you're into stonks, you're stonks, 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 stonks. What do you say it like that? I don't know. What is Dogecoin at? Uh, Doge that's coin? a good question. How much have I lost? Uh, <laughs> I I don't know. The guy who bought it five cents probably isn't four cents. <laughs> okay, well you're up. Um, should never put your two cents yeah, on your four cents. <laughs> I, I, me and Henry were the geniuses and bought it before it was out of stock. Oh, yeah, the geniuses. Oh, yeah. Um, it's currently sitting at five cents. I'd make a couple dollars. Good for wow. you. Wow. Can't Good believe people. we didn't sell when it was at eight. We had two chances to sell when it was you. at eight. I was telling you. were going to make you. like $100. No, I was only going to make 50 bucks. Oh, never mind. Well, Henry, was Henry going to make like $100 then? Yeah, Henry was going to make it. During these times, it's a fill up. <laughs> oh my god, bro. Can we talk about that? We can talk a little bit about it. I mean, so, it's not too much to talk about. No, no, no. I don't want to get into it too much. But before I lost my wallet, I did refill my tank, as I was saying. You have a 19 gallon tank? Less than 19 17. gallon. It's like 17. 17. Yeah, 70 to 18. So I was on empty, rolled into the gas station. I'm like, dude, I regret this already. Um, got lucky that the gas price was at 259 and not 275 or 279 like it was the other day. Um, but it still cost me, I think it was like $48 for a full tank. 48? $48. For 17 gallons. Yes. Insane. Wonderful time. I, went today, <laughs> I went today at Costco, or yeah, today at Costco, it was like two twenty nine. I think I got it for. Two thirty nine. At Costco? I, I think. That's why I was I at two twenty nine. Lucky. Jeez. Yeah. And it was still expensive. I was at a quarter tank and I had a 26 gallon tank and it was $35, but... Yeah, I gotta say, I missed my dollar ninety-eight from the summer. I'm telling you, it was a dollar thirty at one point. I'm sure it was during the quarantine. No, right? I'm not, yeah. I can't. Yeah, I mean, but when I, whatever it was at, I just know it's higher now, and I would like it to go down. I don't it's know. It's almost four dollars in some states. Really? Oh, it is yeah. four dollars in some states. That's oh, yeah. nuts. Yeah. Well, it's California. That was normal. So. Yeah, no, it was four dollars in California before this all happened. Really? No. Yeah. Maybe maybe threes, but. Yeah. That's nuts. Uh, I mean, I'm not sure about you guys, but when I drew or when quarantine first started, that was kind of like what I did. Uh, you know, like when everyone was like really scared of COVID and lockdowns first started, I would go on drives, and I wouldn't be afraid to go on a drive just because gas was that cheap. I do remember gas being really cheap when Corona first started because you know we were on our own oil supply, right? Is that what co- that's what caused it, isn't it? I'm not sure. I'm not a thousand no, percent yeah. sure. I think it was because the demand was so low because so many people were staying at home that, you know, big, big oil industries, big right. fossil fuel industries could afford to lower the prices. But there's a million factors that go into it. Well, yeah. And I mean, for anything, it's hard to point out one factor that causes something. But uh, yeah. So if we could get back to those prices, I mean, that would be nice. Got to get rid of that stuff. We've probably got a, a good couple to four years before that happens. Obviously, that's an obvious statement. We don't need. I mean, it's we pretty, need to touch on it, pretty, I mean. pretty self-explanatory as to uh, why things are the way they are. But we, yeah, we can. Uh, Doesn't really need much more explanation. You get what you ask for, type thing. Moving on, next topic. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know, but um, yeah, no, I think uh, before like when Noah showed up today, we were watching Star Wars. Um, I think it's really fun watching Star Wars with Ethan for it, be, it being his first time. I, I think it would be even better if two things. One, or you know what kind of sucks about watching Star Wars, Star Wars with someone that has never watched Star Wars, is that they still know like the big like, oh no way, like you know what I mean? Like yeah, like they, they, well, the thing is, it has such a household name and scenes are so right. well known that there's no way he wouldn't know, or like anyone would not know. Yeah, no, that's what I'm saying. Like, so even as a kid, I'm sure. So I don't know about you guys, but when I first watched them, you know, I was so young that I didn't like know that oh, Darth Vader is Luke's father until I actually saw the scene or whatever. Um, but I feel like everybody today, even if you, you know, Ethan's never seen it and he he already knows what's going to happen. Yeah, of course. I mean, you live in a world where there's so much stuff going around online and whatnot. 
I mean, it's culture. You can, right? Especially like online culture, you get that type of stuff. Sci-fi, whatever. But it is what it is. I mean, you still gotta see the whole movie and all the movies play out for yourself to understand what's going on. Actually, because he still asks like what the plot's doing and yeah, like, where the plot's going, and then he can kind of predict from what he already knows, like oh, this is going this direction, and he, you know, he might know or he might not know, but yeah, and and like you said, it is fun to watch it with him who's seeing it for the first time, and then myself, uh, you guys are. And I think it's safe to say you guys know more than I do as far as like the Star Wars universe. What's what's real? I mean, and I just know yeah, the basics. I, I don't know that much. Right. Well, um, I know how the storyline goes as far as the movies go. I don't know anything past that. I mean, I love Star Wars. I'm a huge Star Wars geek. But anything like past it, like when you guys start talking about canon and legends, uh, obviously I'm a little behind on that kind of thing yeah the thing is is like when you start throwing terms around like that like people get lost but really like a lot of like a good chunk of what people use the word canon for is just simply um what the movies have created and what they're intended to be it's it's basically everything disney or lucas films has done gotcha so i know like looking forward i definitely want to get more into that obviously with the mandalorian uh have you watched any of that? No, I haven't, and I've been. I keep getting told to watch it, um, but not only am I a Star Wars geek, but I'm also a uh, Marvel geek. I feel like our, our whole generation is kind of a lot of, of people are yeah, into Marvel, um, and it's just so hard not to. I no, mean, there's something for everyone in it, right? And, you know, you I can mean, be anybody on this planet and find a relation to one of the superheroes or whatever. That's what's so great about Marvel. Yeah. And the the coolest part is now. So after the last Avengers movie, and they, you know. Tony Stark dies and Captain Spoiler. Mar- oh, sorry. Oh, spoiler alert. My bad. I, I feel like people have seen it or know about it Maybe. by now. People that don't even know who he is are the only ones that haven't seen it. So right. Be good. But um, as I was saying, like a lot of the originals, original Avengers are are no more. And yet, with this new WandaVision series, I'm still like really excited to see whatever comes out. You're really into it. Like, all right. I'm not. I'm not like super into it in the sense that like. I know when the release dates are, and I know all the, like, little Easter eggs, but I'm into it in the sense of, like, I'm excited to see what the overarching storyline is going to be, how they tie in all the movies together, because that was what was always so cool to me, is that they have so many different independent films, but at the same time, they're all so intertwined, it's not even funny. No, yeah, exactly. I think, um... Like, as far as how many movies there are, that's what keeps people in the Marvel thing, is that you don't get sick of movies. Like, how often are you watching... I mean, unless you're, like, a super diehard fan or you're really into it, like, how often do you watch the, you know, the original three or all six of the, like, the the best six uh, Star Wars movies, right? But when you watch Marvel, you can watch... How many movies are there, Anthony? Too many. Like, like in the 20s? Yeah, I think it was like 22. Not, is there 20? In the teens? High teens. It's definitely high teens. Right? It's gotta be high yeah, teens. Like, like, how many Iron Mans are there, dude? There's three There's three, there's three Iron Mans. There's three Thors. That's there's gonna six. be a fourth Thor coming out soon. Seven. Yeah, right. I'm counting what? How many? One through two or three of the. There's, there's the three Spider There's three Spider Mans, isn't there's there? There's two right now. There's a third coming out. Alright, so there's, right, there's, there's two Spider Mans. How many Spider Mans are there with different actors? Well, but somewhere, well, okay, but somewhere, somewhere owned by Sony at the time, right? But well, two were on, there's only there's only three Spider-Man like franchises. Two of what or three different Spider-Mans. You got Tobey Maguire, Andrew Garfield, and then um, uh, Tom Holland. Andrew Garfield, the best one. Mm, debatable. It's highly debatable. Highly I just don't debatable. like the original Spider-Mans. So. I really like Tobey Toby Maguire. Tobey Maguire, really cringy character. Andrew portrays it perfectly tom holland is just simply 2021 fangirl i they think because he's a stud that's i think it was. i think that um the best like comment i've seen on that debate is toby mcguire was probably like the best um peter parker he, he was the best like guy without the suit role. yeah um andrew garfield was the best spider-man and tom holland is the best of both worlds i feel like um I'm not a huge Tom Holland fan. I'm not gonna lie. I don't think Tom Holland fills P- the Peter Parker thing that well. well I think he. I, I don't think he, he does he, for the MCU. He does for the Marvel com- like right. all that, but like him, like just looking at his personality traits or whatever, it's just he doesn't seem Peter Parkery at all. So I think I I also think that it comes down to the, the films themselves. I feel like because when you when you think about it, when does he really have the chance to 
be that like geeky character that Peter Parker is made out to be. He is right. Well, he is the geeky character. Is I I get what no, but based on what Dom saying, the actor though, like the actor doesn't sell it to me. Like Toby, he's a he looks like a nerd. Yeah. So I I dropped the hard F bomb there. And I think we have already. uh, I've definitely dropped at least one or two. Whatever. Guy, guy says to me yes last week. I don't believe in. Curse I don't words. believe in. Curse I still words. don't. I still don't. I still yeah, believe in curse when words. he's about to drop, when he goes, oh, I almost just dropped. Well, I don't know if it's the first word. one we're dropping through or what, but I don't. Here, if I say it, are you gonna say it? I mean, you're really gonna uh, just not gonna just make a moment it. out of it. I mean, fuck. The guy wearing a green hat's gonna make a moment out of yeah. saying fuck. Like it's yeah, crazy. There we go. There's one from Dom. <laughs> but uh, anyways, back to the whole Spider-Man debate or not debate, but oh. discussion. Uh, yeah, I just think. Like I said, that comment where Tobey Maguire is the best Peter Parker and Andrew Garfield's the best Spider Man and Tom Holland's a good little mixture of both. You know, I think that's what about the best. Black Spider Man, huh? How about Black Spider Man? He's pretty good too. No, the freaking cartoon. What's oh, the- whoa, 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 on Miles. Yeah, he's pretty good. Yeah, he's but he's he's not he's not Peter Parker. Though. Oh, oh, is he not? He's, no, I didn't, I didn't watch that one. I'm not too into Spider Man to be no. honest. But he's that, part of the whole Spider Verse stuff, which is I think the third one's going to be about that. They, that's what the speculation is. Nobody knows for sure. Oh, okay. well, my um, bad. But that was a great animation. Yeah, it was pretty. The Spider Verse. I mean, just soundtrack. Every yeah, talk about like po- you talk about pop culture. Sorry, you talk about and pop he does culture. Say he looks yeah. with one of these. <laughs> and he's like in the club. He's like posting up. <laughs> gonna start headbanging. Big hand. Big hand. Yeah, that's gonna be that. like no, big DJ. Henry's big hen. Yeah, well, big hen or Hennessy. <laughs> big hen, Hennessy, baby. Is Hennessy joining us tonight? I think okay. Hennessy might we're, be. We're hoping. We're hoping. Who, who knows? We meet a new character. Games. Uh, that's why we had the yeah, open chair. Yeah, a new character for real. Here yeah. in the middle. But uh, okay, fine. It's just Ant, not Big Ant. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. DJ Ant. <laughs> DJ Ant with the one earmuff on and the other DJ one. DJ Ant on the earmuffs, beat. Right? What? Those are called earmuffs, right? I think so. Your cuffs, whatever I'm what the hell they're called. I don't know if they're earmuffs. I just or, headphones. I don't know. I, I thought know. Ear, when I hear earmuffs, I think winter. That's what I'm saying. Like winter, yeah. Stuff. Yeah. Like winter yeah. clothes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think those are just called headphones. No, I know, but I'm talking about oh. the actual cup that goes over your ear on the headphones. Oh, I, There's I, a name I, for it. I don't remember the name for ear it. Ear padding. I don't know. Jamie, pull that up. <laughs> <laughs> we do need a J- hey Jamie. Ethan could be our Jamie. Ethan, pull that up. Ethan doesn't have the attention span for that. No, he doesn't. He could be. He could sit there and play Forza, and we go. Ethan, Ethan. Hey, Ethan. He said, "Yeah, I would," but I'm driving right now. I'm playing Forza. <laughs> I think Hold he's playing on. modded Minecraft right now. That's insane. Words over my head. Yeah, it's I heard. Minecraft with extra Noah, stuff. Noah can't play video games to save his life. Lego Star Wars no, on the no, shit. Any, at. Na- anything except for he claims sports games, but anything else, man, it looks like he's lost. No, I, I, get this man a map. Besides my thirteen-year-old brother, I don't think I could beat very many people in sports games. Okay, and even my thirteen-year-old brother is starting to get really okay, good. Mind. You're probably not that amazing. Oh though. no, I'm I'm not. But could I hold my own? Probably not. I don't think so. I, I'm just not never interested. We'll me. figure it out. Yeah, well, we'll find out one day. I I think I could beat your ass in Madden. Madden's yeah, Madden's stupid though. Madden's nothing like football. It's retarded. Well, duh. Yeah, but at least like 2K, you get a somewhat somewhat good experience. Yeah. Madden has the the biggest cheese plays. But yeah, no. Time is it? What are we rocking with? You're that good. Was You're good. <laughs> well, Second, appearance. You're good. Second appearance. Second appearance. Right confused there. by the. <laughs> Are way, you yeah. are you moving the cars? Uh, no, I'm I okay. I think we got space on the. All right, sorry. I think yeah. All yep, right. you get it. You good. Uh, that is one thing that is pretty interesting about this house is the uh, parking the situation. situation. Yeah. yeah, it's awful. It is, especially when people don't know how to park. No. Hey, it's, don't uh, look at me. Talking to you. Oh, I was about to say. I'm talking about were... the kid that just left. <laughs> he usually sits right in front of the driveway for everybody to go around. Well, the thing is, is our our driveway, right? It starts oh, out nice. super thin, and then it gets wide, and then it's two cards wide. So at the like, it's basically mud on either side of the driveway at the bottom because of how thin it is. And then once you get past up that, it's exactly two cars wide, and um, like I'm talking like mirror space, barely room for your mirrors, and. Like, if it's fine, but if you're the first person back, 
good luck because you're probably going to have two or three cars behind you and even if like the cars are in like that's if the cars are in order like <laughs> but if someone messes up their park job which happens all the time not only do you have like the two cars that are supposedly in your row behind you but now you have like the third asshole at the way end on the other lane but who's still blocking the entire other lane all right right and the worst part like you mentioned the mud at the very beginning sucks is, it's not just mud it's two hills on both sides so it's not like you can just go over the mud and deal with a dirty car it's like you know you, yeah you get mud everywhere you it's get, even worse when it's a sheet of ice exactly i mean it, well i don't know why but when i was parking today i tried to park on the left side behind henry and you have and you're you're parking on the hill of mud and your, yeah. your car is slipping the whole way yes absolutely so. it's something to, to, we'll figure i mean eventually we'll get better at parking but or not yeah. or not because you know the thing is, it's like some people like to have their car in the like the back, and some people like having theirs in the front. But like when you when one person needs to go one way, it doesn't work that way anymore. So that kind of sucks. A little That's bit. why my idea is everybody back in close to the house and parallel park. I feel like that'd be the most efficient way because you always have the tough. Yeah, yeah, but we have to keep the lane open that isn't against the house because there's no room to go. As soon as you get over near the house, you can't. If you're stuck, you're stuck. Yeah. If you have the room with the hill on it, you got a little bit of wiggle room to get around cars. Right, you back down? Yeah, I did. Yeah. I, I think it's the Anthony's. Yeah, it's your headphones are Your around. headphones are on. We're hearing a little echo over here. Yeah, I'm just... Okay. Can <laughs> you turn down a little bit? I can. Huh? Yeah. Did you do it? It's not going right now. Oh, well, okay. well I'm just oh, saying if you okay. hear it, I can just turn down a little bit. Not that, not that, not that <laughs> big of a deal. His third appearance? Or is that fourth? Technically? Fourth, technically, because fourth, technically. in out, in out. Yeah. But yeah, the boy Andrew, the goat. Little cameos. <laughs> cameos. That's what so, you call them, right? Yeah. So, Kirkland, um, the only brand at Costco. Is it, are they a Costco brand? I think they just sell exclusively with Costco. I they thought, do. I thought Kirkland. They sell. They sell Kirkland merch. I thought Kirkland they was do. Costco. I'm not sure. Maybe the same company owns both. That's what I'm thinking. I mean, I, I don't know. I'm just saying, like, I wouldn't sur- surprise me at all because Kirkland, there's Kirkland snacks, Kirkland water, Kirkland eggs, Kirk- Kirkland milk, Kirkland yeah. Kirkland golf balls, Kirkland hold on. t-shirts. No, like, I, I want to get some Kirkland hold, drip. Hold on, no. hold on. Kirkland yes, golf so balls. Hard. Do you guys know about this? Do you guys know what happened with this? What happened with it? All right, so... Uh, Kirkland, now this is what I've heard multiple times. I worked as a caddy at Lockmore, you guys know that. But um, Kirkland actually stole the design of the Titleist Pro V1. And since they're such a big manufacturer, they were able to, I guess, make essentially the same ball with the same design, but with a softer core. Uh, which, you know, once you get into the physics of a ball, the softer it is. And based on the dimple size and dimple dynamics is depends on how far it goes right right that's why dimples are on a golf ball it helps it go farther Mm -hmm. but basically i guess kirkland stole the design of the pro v1 and they were like i think i'm not sure if they got sued or what ended up happening with it but for a for a good couple months stretch there all anybody wanted to play with was kirkland balls because they were essentially a pro v1 but cheaper Really? Yeah. And there was like the like there was like the games played with them like behind it to prove that like they're yeah. So I yeah I don't I don't know I never like I guess I never really looked it up on my own. I just know golfing at uh, Lockmore. You know you hear a lot of the guys that are out there every day, and there's some scratch golfers that uh, are really into that kind of stuff. Um, Kirkland. Yeah, Kirkland balls were getting played with and getting resold on uh, sites like eBay and whatnot for like almost double what they were selling for. Really? Which, yeah, you it was just walk into a, a Costco and get them. Well, I mean, sometimes, but that's the thing is they were getting sold out so quickly. That, right, and you know, I mean it's a bargain, right? You're buying it for bulk. At Costco. Right, exactly. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so if you ever, moral of the story, if you ever find a Kirkland ball laying on the golf course, make sure you pick it up. It'll probably be your next how, best how, ball. Yeah. How wide? How wide is Costco? How far are they? wide what do you mean yeah like um do like do is it like as big everywhere it is as it is here yes are you sure well I no, guess it, in no it is is it is it countrywide no it's countrywide because i know they have locations countrywide but i feel like oh i don't know if it's as big as it because here at Mich- here in michigan i mean i feel like everybody has a costco member well i i, I don't but i have Costco. Well, like a lot but of I'm people do. Like, there's also a lot of other big wholesales so michigan like, has a lot of big wholesales people yeah. don't know about there's sands club now there's bj's 
What yeah, else is there? Be, uh, uh, Meyer is. No. Well, no. not like not wholesale, not but wholesale. I'm saying they're a competitor. They're a direct competitor of Costco. Hold off. They're yeah. not wholesale. Though. Not wholesale. But, but no, they're a direct competitor. Like, um, no, he's saying he's saying, saying stores, stores like that. Stores, stores like that. But Meyer, I'm pretty sure. Just I'm saying, like I don't think Costco really is as big as it is other places. Not because of wholesale, but because there's other stores where culturally people are different. Like you go west coast. Who the fuck cares about going to get whole whole food stuff there? Not a lot of people. They're just gonna go to freaking wherever the hell they want to go. That's what I'm saying. I don't think it's that. Isn't the store Whole Foods big? There is a last... store called Whole Foods. Yeah, right? yeah and that's, that's like that's like organic stuff, right? Yeah. The maker of that is from Texas. Whole Foods sucks. I no, never it doesn't. Been. Whole Food is for uh, middle-aged women who are trying to get slim, and the word I'm not allowed to repeat. So. You know, oh, I, I like Whole Foods. I don't know what you Mainly see, because I get a discount because man was I don't know what word you're talking about, but okay. Membership. It starts with an F, ends in agates. But, um... Jeez. All right. Wow. Okay, then. Wow. All right. What? I, didn't just, I thought you... It's were... a funny word. We can't use <laughs> I the word faggot. Know. I didn't know. I didn't know. It is a funny word. <laughs> well, you I didn't know that. Faggot? Didn't like, what? Gee, whoa. <laughs> What's wrong with that? Well, Do we I mean, Michael Scott now? No. <laughs> I, all I said was that whole that was that was Whole Foods is big out west, and you take it to... No, no, Because no, Anthony, I always said it's awful. Anthony's like, no, it's not. It's great. I'm like, it's awful. It's just... <laughs> or, it's, or, been, or, I, it's awful. You walk into one... Have you ever seen, no, I, no, that's the thing. Amazing. No, that's the thing. As I thought they re- legitimately only. Are you telling me there's Whole Foods here in yeah. Michigan? Yes. Uh-huh. Yes. There's one in Troy that I go to. You're yes. kidding? No, no I'm not kidding. The, okay, so my mom and Anthony. Amazon owns them too. Anthony, what? Anthony, I, and my mom walked in there, right? Okay. Telling you, I felt like if you guys ever seen the episode of Parks and Rec where Ron and April go into the organic food store, yeah. And the guy's like organic bacon, and Ron asks for it, and he goes, "I'd love to have one," or whatever he says, and he drops it in the trash can, and he goes, "Please, another." Guy hesitantly gives him another one, and then takes it and drops it in the trash can. He goes, "Can I have another?" And he goes, "No." He goes, "Another, please." And the guy goes, "I don't think I can serve you anymore." And he's like, um, "I just want to make sure no one else." He goes, "Sir, is there a problem?" He goes, "I just want to make sure no one else has to eat this." That's right? awful. And so, then, and so then April, April jumps in and goes. I I'll, I'll, I'll want to try one. He goes, okay. And then April throws in the trash. And then the scene cuts. But I'm like, that's what I felt like in this stupid store. Because everything, everywhere is just this food that is branded to, for these people who are just mind-numbingly gone on what f- good food produce is like. And it's, it's not all like that, though. I agree with you for most of that. But there are a lot of good options there. The like, culture around it, I'm saying. I 100% going in there, you feel out of place. And the people there are not people that I want to associate with. Most of the, mostly. There are some people. But... <laughs> Turn your headphones down. Turn your headphones down. Turn your headphones down. You can't hear it. I can hear it. We can hear it, though. It doesn't matter. It's not picking up on the mics. Okay, whatever. So, it it doesn't matter. Like, if you go there and you find something you like, you like it. But the entire store isn't bad because, yes, they have some bad options. I'm it's still, not, okay, use the word some. I, first of all, they don't have all there's a I, lot of stuff I'm there still mind good. blown that we have Whole Foods in Michigan. I never knew I about hate, it. Gen, like, I hate generalizations, but the generalizations are funny. So, like, when I say, like, earlier when I dropped the, I'd say faggots, I'm not being, like, demeaning to it. I'm just saying you use terms like that when you generalize it as a funny intent, not as, like, a harming intent. So, when I'm talking about a trash place like Whole Foods, I'm going to use funny words to go with it. So, when I talk about how I hate Whole Foods, I'm going to, you know, make fun of it by using funny words. That's just what I do. Wait, so. We better be careful, though, because, you know, it's... It is a sensitive word. It's funny to you, and I agree with it's you. It's on the so Rogan yeah. podcast. They talk about they use they had the conversation. Yeah, here's the, here's the difference: is that Joe Rogan is never has to worry about getting a job in the future. The, I, I mean, I'm, it, I'm sorry if someone wants to you know apprehend my getting hired because I'm making no, a I no, hey, that's I'm 100 percent on your side. That sucks. Hey, use but, use the language you want to use. I'm just saying. No, yeah, that's fine. I will. But I 100 percent agree with you. But it's not the world we live in, and it's sad. Well, that's tragic. The First not, Amendment is not existent anymore. No, yeah, that's fine. But if I'm going to make a joke about faggots, I'm going to make a joke because it's kind of funny. But oh, wow. not not about faggots. But I'm going to use the word. You know what I'm saying? Gotcha. So. You're using you're using the word as a this as a describing thing. I mean, not if, as a, a, a cancel culture, you want to cancel me? Fine, do it. But I mean, go watch a Chappelle show or not the Chappelle show, but a Chappelle special where he literally uses the word. I think it's freaking hilarious. But. Um, and the vast majority hopefully agree with Dave Chappelle. I mean, he's pretty fucking funny. Great, greatest of all time, almost, if not. Yeah, he's he's up there for sure. I uh, there's a couple of his stand-ups that I didn't necessarily love, but um, most of them are pretty good. No, most no, most of them are pretty good. I forget which one it was, but one of the Netflix series, or not one of the Netflix ones. I was, you know, it just felt like 
I hate when comedy gets too politically motivated. Yeah, that's that's exactly what I was about yeah. to say. I, you know, you if you have that platform, you have all the right to speak on whatever issues you think you need to speak on. But when that becomes your entire act, and I felt like I felt like for the most part, he's pretty good about not doing that. He's pretty good about making jokes about his life and whatnot. But there was I forget which one it was, but one of his routines was. I think it's a 2018 one. I, yeah, I forget. I, like I said, don't I can't. It, it's something about birds and stuff, or something. The title. I don't know. I don't, I don't even. I don't even remember that much. The I one just, right before sticks and stones. Yeah. I, yeah, I don't remember exactly which one it was, but it just seemed like he would go political. Political. Uh, it's the easiest way to get laughs, though. Oh well, yeah, but. Yeah. Uh, or like the Chris Chris Rock, another great comedian, right? Yeah. But um. He came out with the Netflix special. I think it was also. I didn't even watch it. Yeah, I I watched. I watched it, and you know, it, it just was tough to get through because felt oh, politics. Uh, it, it just politics, 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 and well, yeah, that's, you know, that, I was gonna say that's the thing nowadays is you know, people don't realize is that these comedians go through. Um, they put out a special. It takes uh, for fast people like Kevin Hart, who has a team of writers, right? A year, they're banging one out every year. Um, but for you know. As far as the other top ten, top five special like stand up comedians, it takes about two years to make one. It goes through hundreds of hours of testing jokes right. in you know, bar like, you know, places like the comedy store in California or walk you know, and take a job and even the small places like Joey Diaz loves going to the small places where he's from to get back to his roots, he says, to get real laughs, not fake laughs. Who is Joe Rogan now or something? Huh? Who is Joe Rogan now? Well, I want to talk on the topic we're talking about. No, yeah, about. no, we're talking about <laughs> so, like the we're topic. talking about like political jokes and what terminology will get you canceled or whatever. But well, you, and here's the thing though, is that sometimes not even political jokes will get you canceled. Like I'm not sure if you guys watched the most recent Kevin Hart stand-up that was in his basement, but um, I believe it was like the week after. I was listening to The Breakfast Club on my way into work, and people were up, like upset that he uh, he told this joke basically about how his daughter is in I think middle school now or whatever, and she comes home. And he's she's like, Dad, I like a boy. I like this boy. I like this boy. Whatever, right? And it describes this boy. A week later, she comes home and goes. And, you know, Kevin asks, like, oh, how's you and whatever. And she's like, Dad, I don't like that kid anymore. Like, you know, this kid, right? And so, and then he describes that scenario again for the third time. And he's like, he's like, by the third boy, I was getting real concerned. And he's like, because now my daughter's showing whole like activity, right? Yeah. I'm not sure if you remember that joke. It's but funny. So, yeah, so it's, it's, it's funny, right? That's funny. Well, <laughs> it was a joke. Yeah. And obviously. And I agree with that joke. He, okay. Anyway, anyway, I'm, nobody asked for your take on the joke. I'm just saying that was the joke, and he's making a joke nonetheless about his daughter, right? And here, here people are mad that he's saying whole like activity towards his own daughter. Like obviously this this guy's joking. Yeah, I, I I don't think anybody for a second believes that Kevin Hart thinks his daughter who's is a hoe. Yeah, who's yeah. Tw you know whatever That's thirteen awesome years thing, old though. is a hoe. But yet here people are trying to cancel him. Yeah, and before we get too far away from uh, what I was talking about. Um, just with like the whole canceled thing or whatever, like it doesn't uh, like if you go online and you read that people get canceled or whatever, it doesn't. Like I'm sure it's the same for every like for all, everyone's house or whatever. But I don't care. I don't care. I don't care if people online want to cancel people. I think that's hilarious. I mean, yeah, I have your own opinion, whatever. But like I was saying, is those like we talked the example of comedians because it's a you know they're what's their job? They're up there. They're earning money, busting ass. They're finding out what's funny the hard way, right? So they're going through this whole process. If the joke works, it works. Obviously, there's boundaries, right? But they're not going out of anyone's boundaries. But the thing is, people think they are. And that's the issue we're having. Right. So people think that they're encroaching on boundaries that really don't even exist. Um, so, like, if... Like uh, me dropping the word right there. I don't. I'm not worried about getting canceled or losing it. Like looking for a job in my future because I don't care that if a company is looking at my track record and can't take the fact that I'm using a word in an unharmful way, then that's on them. I don't. I don't know what I have to say for that company. But I do know that I'm going to say things uh, like I mean it. But if you want to twist it whatever way, do whatever you want. But that's not how I meant to say it. So, like, if we're sitting here having a conversation or, like, a comedian's making a joke and people want to get offended, go ahead. But just know that the majority of people are laughing their asses off, having a good time while you're all uptight for whatever reason. So it is what it is. But, um, yeah, I just wanted to touch on that topic because, I mean, like I was saying about the Chappelle skit or whatever, is he had that 
bit on sticks and stones i think it was for the l's the g's the b's yep. the t's and the q's or whatever yeah i didn't Freaking see that one murdered he murdered with that bit it was so good uh, yeah, and hopefully was... hopefully people i mean i'm sure there was people that got offended but i hope i hope people even the people he's talking about i hope they took the joke and took it like you know we're laughing with everyone not we're not really making fun of everyone that much so I just, you know, it is what it is. It's a crazy world we live in. I think the best part about Chappelle when he gets to jokes like that, when he gets to the political jokes, is that he says it in a way where he's not, like, trying to say it and not offend anybody. He just says it. He just says it and he doesn't really, you know, care. Yeah. Why would you? you No, and that's what I'm saying is that's what I think makes Chappelle so great, and I think people are scared to be like that, Um, you know, which. That's why movies aren't good anymore. Yeah. Because everybody's too afraid to make anybody laugh. He's not wrong. He's not wrong. That's why comedy is not as good anymore. That's why there's a limited amount of people that are right. Well, I'm not saying good. I'm not saying. Well, there's a big difference between what you know. I still find older movies funny, right? I, but there are some movies now that I find funny too. But I agree with you that they're a lot harder to come by, though. Like older well, I'm not saying harder are, to come. I'm just saying that they they contain different stuff. And yes. whether you agree with why they contain different stuff or not, I mean that's up to you. I'm just saying, like the problem is the golden age of comedy, and all the old Adam Sandler and all his friends, or even stuff with like um, Jack Black. The good jokes that are in those movies are not allowed anymore. Oh, yeah. No, yeah, they're long gone. I don't, I don't know about Adam Sandler. Uh, uh, Some of the jokes they have are just he, not. What about Adam anything. Sandler? What what movies? Billy Madison, the entire movie would be canceled. Really? Yes. You the think? Movie. Would. Everything movie, from every naked scene what, what to him being that special. No everything. way. Well, yeah, what year was that made? 90s, I think. 90s. Dude, early 90s? You guys are meaning to tell me Billy, Billy Madison, Madison would, would never air exist. today. No, it would no not way. Air. It would Pull not. it up. You guys 100%. Are, it would not air today. If you want to go back to even TV shows, The Office would not be allowed. That's a hot take. No way. You think You think nowadays... Tell me, t- correct me if I'm wrong, but if there is ever going to be another movie made today about a white man taking That's a rich role and special over over women and their bodies and saying stupid shit like, what do you, do you say, did, what movie, I might be mixing up my Adam Sandler movie, where he goes, boobies or whatever, and he's doing all that crap, that would not, that would not air today. It wouldn't, it wouldn't I air can't, today. I like can't, sexual fantasy. But here's the you thing is, I can't, can't, I can't, I can't give th- me a movie in the last five years that's anything close to that. But I can't, I think... Billy Madison is so extremely Adam Sandler. Yeah, so that's you, it's because though. it's because it's his original. Really? You're really thinking that as yes, you like those. Movies. I don't know. I feel like people. I feel like people who are watching this, you know, comment down below. If a new, if a new, okay, listen. At the time when it came out, Adam Sandler, brand new, up and coming actor, right? Well, also he, oh, and he now. Hold on. He, okay. he was right, brand new, up and coming. Yeah. Now he has this whole persona. He's top two all time, top three all time for comedy actors, right? Top directors, right? So when you're looking at him. He has this persona around him now that you look back and say, oh, yeah, well, okay, here's, like, the middle age of his stuff when Grown Ups 1, Grown Ups 2, right? So that stuff was, like, as far as, like, when he became make, started making movies. So I'm talking, like, 90s to 2020, right? right? So those movies came out in the 2010s, correct? Mm-hmm. Okay, so that's, like, his middle middle age of his, his comedy, right? So those movies are already starting to get filtered down already. No, you really Instantly. watch Happy Gilmore. It's not really think; it's how it is. Watch Happy Gilmore. You by yourself can think about something as in. Hold on, hold on can I finish my point? Yeah, well, yeah. Sure. So, Go so ahead. like I'm saying, watch. Here's here's the real breakdown. You watch Happy Gilmore. You watch Billy Madison. You watch Waterboy. Especially Waterboy. <laughs> watch, now go to Grown Ups One and Two, more so One. See the filter. The filtrations happening. Now go watch Hubie Halloween. No, but hold on. Let's let's watch uncut gems. Hold on. Let's let's clear this up. Hold uncut on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Different just, type. Uh, different deal. Different. And I think Hubie Halloween is not fair because he signed that big deal with Netflix. You got to understand. Now I don't think I don't think uh, Adam Sandler is as much trying to get the laugh as much as he is trying to get the dollar. No. 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 no that's a, oh that's, a, that's a horrible Adam, take. To that's look a at horrible take. Listen to me. Hold Adam on, Sandler to me. is a comedy genius. I agree. But he completely. is being limited by. He's right. No. 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 But hold on. But listen. He signed that multi-million dollar. What was the deal yeah, with but Netflix? But he can't make the comedy well, because of the culture. Out. Oh, it was. It was to put some of his movies on there as well. Oh, okay. But he has like. But I'm saying. I'm saying with the new Netflix deal where he has to produce. X amount in a certain amount of time. I don't, obviously, not everyone's going to be a hit. I mean, there's going to be certain ones that. No, are, they're really not. The Netflix but specials are good hits. Though, still. No, that's what I'm saying. Right. But they're all still good movies. They're all good. Not, and I'm saying I don't think they're intended to be hits. They're intended to just produce. Well, you don't to make produce. a movie, you don't think it's going to be successful. When you have a, a guaranteed deal with Netflix, I'm no, he's, no, no, no. he's trying to make his He's already made so. his money. That's the thing, though. Like, what, okay, 
Wait. Right. So then is it? So then is the question that he's getting filtered, or is it more that he he just filtered. doesn't care? Times as much. are changing. Times are changing. He it's can't do those jokes him. anymore. He physically can't, or else he wouldn't get the deal with Netflix. They Netflix wouldn't. would cancel his deal in a second if he did, if he made a movie like Billy Madison. Okay. All right. It wasn't mine there. It's okay. just the way we live. Yeah. I was. I'm telling you, he is people, a comedy genius. No, I. I but he I, has to change with the time. We've grown through it. To the point where it's like we don't even recognize it anymore. Because if you like, I didn't recognize it till you go back and watch some of the movies. Go back and watch Anchorman. Really? Not allowed anymore. Not not close. But even they they produced what not Anchorman close. three. But it's not good. It's not as good. Sounds good. Anchorman one and two are the best, obviously. The jokes are dumbed down. If you watch Anchorman one, not happening. I, I I won't I won't say that we we aren't as you it's, know I'll, it's not crazy I won't stuff either. no I won't argue that we aren't as that we. Are softer now than we've been in the past because I, I agree that we are a little more softer now than we are in the past. But it, I don't know if it's that. Much. Here's a prime example. You here's, here's, here's it's you because know, you don't think well, it is because of your mindset. Here, you want to know what? Want to know what? Great example where you might have skimmed the top of your head. Um, just saying on the like the some of the things we already talked about. Anchorman one, right? Right. What was the 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 leading woman's role? I forget the actress's name, but um, yeah. you know the new reporter, right? Mm-hmm. She's hot. She comes in. Never. Never from the year 2018 on, or 2017 on, would you ever get a movie where the main actor, did he direct those movies? I have no clue. Okay, well, let's just say he did or did not. Who cares? Um, Even if he didn't, he's the main star. Will Ferrell, great, right? Top three comedy actors all time, right? Him himself is the main character, and his boys, his three boys... Which is what Steve Carell, oh, um, yep, and the last guy, um, I forgot his name already. Uh, but they're yeah. all having a competition to see who can get in her pants first, right? Okay. And they're sexualizing her. That that is the smallest. That's the easiest example of they don't even do anything crazy. The guy just puts on horrible smelling. This clothes. conversation here right now is a perfect example. Yeah. Well, even let me, further. before I, I agree with you, I'll let you get to that in a second. But think about this. They didn't do anything crazy. The one guy tried this cologne that sucked, mm-hmm. right? Brick didn't do anything because Brick was Brick. He didn't really do that great. Will Ferrell tried to woo her with being Ron Burgundy, right? But I'm kind of um, big deal. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> right, and she didn't care. She didn't care. He goes, "Oh, it's just a, it's a, what, what do you say in the pants? He he, something. Oh, well, oh yeah, yeah, the boner. And she's a boner, and he's like, no, it's a, it's a, uh, illusion. It's an illusion. In the yeah, pants or the, the pants, design of the pants, yeah. right? <laughs> If you ever saw a movie from 2017 now where a dude visually they put they faked a boner and then put him in front of the, the leading female actor actress and was like here sexual like hit on her, it's not gonna happen. And that's that's not a bad like men hit on women, women hit on men. That's how things work. That's how you date people. That's how you get married. Right? It's how you do. It. That's how life works. But for some reason, you'll never see a movie from like anymore in the last three years, last four years where. That role stays that way. You'll see it reversed. You know how many movies where the woman is like... Well, it's only fair. It's only fair. Yeah. Right? Because they've been oppressed for so long. Yeah, so what I'm obviously. saying is there's an old school type of comedy where you can do the narrative. Like the, just the stereotypical comic doesn't happen anymore. And it's so much so that they're trying to reverse it hard. So you see movies like... I like um, Worst example ever. Female Ghostbusters. Female Ghostbusters is the worst movie of all time. One of the oh, worst. Top five worst. Top there's five. Been worse movies. Top five <laughs> since the year 2000. Top five worst movie of all time. It's, I can't. It's so I bad. can't think of them off my. It, like block. I'm talking blockbuster movies. Like, not, so like movies not, that have. I will agree. High not my favorite. But that that is a whole different thing. I think the whole how every how every movie, not just Ghostbusters, every Female movie's version of American Pie. That was, that was bad. Women. That was also like that was American also a Netflix. Netflix special because they're using women to sexualize I'm, no, men. No, I'm just saying I don't think I can't I can't think of one Netflix like special. Oh, oh, oh. You're You're good back, hold on, hold on. No, I'll try fixing it. A little loose. Alright. I I can't think of one Netflix. Oh. Sold. Sold. Believe it. No, that's got awful. There we go. I can't think of one. We're good. One Netflix special movie that is good. They're all good. They're just not the duo great. Is pretty good. The what? The problem is the they're do-over. all good movies. Never seen them. Do over. Well, once the do over. That's but good. It's about it's Adam, uh, Adam Sandler, Sandler and cancer and David Spade. Yeah, oh, I didn't get it. They fake yeah. their lives. But they the thing deaths. is, they're all good movies. 
they're just never going to be as good because of the change in culture. No, I, it's the same reason we're having this exact conversation right now. Well, I just our mindsets of us growing up are different than and even people, people growing up older now. Than us. Yeah. Right. Well, yeah. I mean, comedy is fun and it's cool, and the actors are still around, but you're not going to feel the presence of some of the greats fading away simply because the way we've moved so far from what their field of comedy is, we're not going to feel them leaving. I just feel like stand-up is not as lively as it used to be. Well, no. Well, it's the same conversation, though. All of this roots back to we're not allowed to say anything anymore. Like, we can, but cancel culture. You're going to lose... The people that... It's goes. It keeps going back into a huge, complete culture that's completely changed. You go to, like, even Twitter. That's the obvious example. But you can say whatever you want in there as long as you agree with somebody that controls it. It has a narrative. It's, yeah, it's um, the same narrative that's always like, running for everybody. Wait, what, what was the last sentence you said before you started talking? I had a point on that, and I lost it as soon as we started talking. That I said? Yeah. I, I just said I can't. Well, two things. One, I can't think of a Netflix that's special. Good. That, that's good. Right. Oh, stand up. I want to jump in on that. Yeah. Real quick, though. Yeah. The whole, like, movie thing. I just think movie creators, like writers, I mean, it's, it's we're at an all-time low. Not, not just because, if you want to argue that it's, you know, we're not allowed to say as much anymore, hey, whatever, that's your argument. But I think, personally, I think it's because... We're just, we're just not as creative anymore. I mean, look at look at some of the biggest. That's a hard assumption. Well, I'm just let me get to my argument real quick. The entire remake generation that we're in. I mean, I mean, remake Lion King, remake Ghostbusters. Re, I mean, remaking all these '90s movies that that were perfect as were. Yeah, and, I mean, remaking race history, remaking cartoons into. Like, yeah, like, know, like that's different, but like adding like what, um, like, uh, do we, do we need the, the ninth star Wars or whatever? Like all this crap, like we're just continuing. I get what you're saying on that part for sure. Um, but if you think for a damn second that Will Ferrell and Adam Sandler are as funny as they used to be, then you're wrong. It's just because they, they, they're not, they're not going to, they're not producing that anymore. Right. Uh, yeah. I mean, like, I'm sure they're just as funny as they used to be. Their, their comedy hasn't, they haven't left their comedy. It's, they, they probably have 17 movies written in their fucking notebook from that they just didn't even make. They don't even, they don't right. have the, the bother to even go through the issues of trying to get the, the, the green light on it to go through with it. I mean, I'm, I could, that's also a hard assumption, but just like, like stand up comedy. So I'll go back to that mm-hmm. real quick. I'll tie it in. Yeah. Bang, bang. How many jokes do comic do comics leave out because they don't, they're fearing of getting canceled or they want it, they know it works but can they record it for their special because you know how specials are recorded you go to the network you sign a deal with the network you have to follow the network's rules and then they'll record you so if you want to get the paycheck you have to dumb down your stuff to the network's you know likeness so you have to you have to not a huge John Mulaney fan. But the one joke John Mulaney did make about how he, when he was writing his special and he had a joke about a midget and the network called him in and said, uh, you can't use the joke about the midget. He goes, well, why not? He's like, because it's like saying the N word. And he's like, no, it's not because you just said midget. Right. But you said you should call it the, the same, same, same bit. Same bit. Well, okay, but all right. Yeah, but with the N word. Yeah. But, right. Okay. But with the F word and then the N word. Okay. But, all word. right. Regardless, I think that. I mean, that shows, like, to me, when I think of filtration, yes, 100%. Mm-hmm. Are we seeing some over-filtration in places? Yes. Is it the leading cause for bad, you know, not necessarily bad. I think it's the but leading cause for lack of motivation. You think? I think so. I think that's a hard take and a hard here's, assumption, here's especially because we're why. not. Here's why. Okay. Here's, so I'll take the same point you had, but I'll spin it around on you. The idea that Adam Sandler's in the industry just to make money now is somewhat irrelevant because he's made so much money to where he doesn't need more money. Obviously, billionaires want to make more money and keep making money, and millionaires want to do that. But as far as I'm concerned, if you have ever followed Adam Sandler's life, the dude walks around in and one shorts and a polo, drives a Ferrari, wearing clothes like that, and shoots hoops at the local wreck. He's the right? goat. I so mean, he, he lives a life already. He doesn't want... I'm sure everyone wants more, right? But he has so much more no, that he's still in it for the comedy. I'm not, say, I'm not saying that he's... I'm not saying he's like, oh, I got to make another dollar. I'm saying he's more like, oh, Netflix is going to pay me that much just for, just to produce X amount of movies. Sign my name. 
Well, Do obviously. That's, right. That's, yeah, no, that's he's not true. making bad movies, though. No, they're good His movies. movies are good. They're never going to be as good. Be- because he can't. Because they're on Netflix. Yeah. Because Netflix he's has a standard. He's making as good as movies as he probably I'm, can. I'm just going to say this. I'm going to leave this where it is. And you can... This is not up for debate. This is... Everyone has their own opinion. This is my opinion. Strictly my opinion. Before you jump down my throat. Adam Sandler's movies themselves are not great movies like cinematically but they are great in the sense that he can do them quick they are overall relatively good on return they you know it only takes him a year to produce a movie like Hubi halloween i think it was a total of nine months shooting from start to finish well he didn't have to think about Hubi halloween at all right well i'm saying like because he gets it done so quick with everyone that he works with and with his studio and I think now with the deal, and I keep coming back to the deal, it's just so easy for him to produce those that it it doesn't matter to him if it's a hit like Billy Madison. No, he doesn't care if it's a hit. Right, that's what I'm saying. Why would he care that his dumbed-down, filtered movie is a hit? He doesn't care. Right. Because, like, even the do-over... That's still an assumption, though. No, no, no. I'm, well, no, no, no. We're I'm, all I'm, everything's so on assumptions, assumptions here. assumption crap right here, because I know it's not an assumption. You look at the do-over, yeah. doesn't even stand next to Happy Gilmore. Doesn't. It's not meant to no. be. That. That's what I'm saying. Because that's, he that's doesn't exactly care enough for it, too. It's he a wants a type of movie. I know. Anthony, no, listen. Anthony. I'm on. agreeing with you. So stop yeah. stop defending against me. Because what I'm <laughs> telling you is, is he cares enough for his movies to do well. But if he's, if the paycheck screams higher at his face, then his willingness to, to fight the system to, to put in traditional comedy like he's but used he's not to. either of those. He's making a different type of movie now. I don't think he he's is. He's not going for the smash hit comedy. The right. do-over is about cancer. The do over is a completely different type of movie. Okay. Uncut uh, Gems is not about it at all. I use that as an example. Uncut Gems wasn't. Well, that's 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 another, that's what a are, different type of name movie. Another, exactly. Name another comedy movie on Netflix that he has. He doesn't have anything like him anymore. No, we're not, not, we're not, saying, we're not saying like like his old movies. Are, I, here's we're thing. saying name one of his comedy it's, movies and, and that are here's on. Here's where I'm, I'm on your side here, Anthony, because the reason there's, like, again, the whole thing is there's no more Adam Sandler, like, really great comedy movies on Netflix or whatever. Like, Noah, does, Noah said they're not great movies. Noah but, thinks it's because there's the money's easier and it, right. the deal's there, right? I'm saying is for both reasons. Like, obviously, if he's going to sign a deal, he's going to sign a $20 million deal, however much it was. I don't know how much right. it was. We, but, we, have three, but, we have three different takes here. Mine is that... He, it's influenced by money. It's it's influenced by money. Hey, I can produce this many films, get out of here and make acts. If they're great, if they're good and people like them, cool. If you know, if they're not my greatest hits, if they're not remembered, I don't really care because at the end of the day, I made this. I you're know, you're that's saying that's a hard assumption. Okay, but your hard assumption, if I'm not wrong, is that he's not going for the hit smash comedies anymore because he can't because filtration and I'm not saying that though okay then what are you saying I'm he's trying saying to say he's that. making new movies I'm saying he's making a different type of movie now for okay. example perfect example the do over that movie is a good story about a realistic problem that is completely destroying the entire world that could easily be a real situation that actually happens right. not the story like not like what happens in the movie but the, it's talking about the cancer, base, the base of the, the, the cancer, and how there could be a cure. But big companies like that produce chemo are holding it, from holding us. it back. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And that's an actual thing. That's a different type of movie. Uncut Gems is a great movie. It's an insanely good movie. But it's not a comedy. It's yeah. not meant to be a comedy. Right. The difference between Happy Gilmore and Waterboy, those are all meant to be forced funny comedies with jokes that are made for the movie. He's making more story-driven movies now. But this was, that was my point where I'm going to define my point on this is he realizes what he had in the past was arguably the greatest or second greatest and comedy. You can't do that your entire life. Com- that's what I'm saying. So let me talk. So the com- greatest comedy career ever, right? He recognized that. His movies were great. And now he realizes that in the modern age, we can't do that anymore because people don't like it. Big, big companies don't like it. Plus, he's getting to get paid not to do what the big companies don't like. So does he really have the foothold to fight against them for that? Sure. It's Adam Sandler. Does he have a care in the world to fight against that? No, because he's going to go in a new, new direction. He's going to make movies because he's interested in making movies other than comedies. So he's making, he's making great emotional movies now. If you didn't like Uncut Gems, it's because you're probably hoping for a comic relief movie from Adam Sandler. Right. <laughs> but if you wanted a, a, a you know down-to-earth Really like big drama a movie. Gritty, he has a it's great, a great movie. Yeah. It's a great movie. Um, but he re- he knows his market. Yeah. He knows that the comedy time has passed. We're no longer going to get good comedies anymore like we used to. If you want dumbed down comedies, you're going to get them. 
you're gonna get I don't even I name a comedy movie that came out. There isn't one. Exactly. The part, like the last good Adam I don't know if it's the last, but the perfect example of an Adam Sandler comedy is just nonstop jokes. Grown ups too. Right. Every but, single scene in that movie is a different joke. And that's yes. the point of it. Yeah. But yeah. these newer movies aren't about comedy. No, I'm not it's saying, not making I'm not laugh. saying they are, but like Grown Ups 2 didn't come out all that long ago, did it? 2010. Was it? No. It's it was, 2010. Pull, no, pull, pull that up. Hold on. I'm pretty sure it's 2010. Oh, I, I think the first one came out in 2008. No way. I, no, no, I do I do know that way. one of them is one of them in the early 10s. I, I thought the first when one was 2010. When did Girl... I thought the first one was 2008, second one was 2010. But oh, it could my, be like I got it right here. Grown Ups 2, July 12th, 2013. Yeah. Okay, so, so the first so one was 2013. The first one was 2013. So, so eight years ago, that's right in the middle you, of that filtration. I'm you think about. you think the that's what I'm saying? Like, because I feel all right now. Shame on me. I thought I, I thought that the Grown Ups two came out, or like, well, like yeah, like, like seventeen, yeah, like seventeen ish. So that's that's shame on me for thinking that. Yeah, and, no. Because like there isn't that much. I feel like Grown Ups two. Every scene is a different. Here's scene. here's a good one. Right, and I, good and one. I feel like it's not that filtered down either. Here's, but here's a good it's one. Not, here's, it's the here's, end of it. here's a good one. 2010 or whatever, 2009, 2010, whenever Grown Ups 1 came out. Um, yeah. Disney actress wants to get chocolate wasted. Come on. I mean, that, that type of comedy is not in his earlier stuff. I mean, it's obviously that's a, a film made for young, young adults and kids as well as family. adults who find Adam Sandler's content funny. Another perfect example, Blended. It's a Blended family comedy. Yeah, it was funny. Yeah, it's hilarious. Yeah, when but it's a that, family comedy. When did that one come out? That's 2012. Yeah. Was that that yeah. wasn't maybe 2014? No way, bro. No way. These, 2016. No way. These are that old. Come 2014. on. 2014. No way. Yeah. It's bro. A, that's what I'm saying. Because I'm old. It's We're a different old. type of Adam Sandler. Yeah. Um. Like, like Blended's great because that's another perfect example where it's it's a movie made for everyone from four to to ninety. <laughs> but if you looked at, you're not going to show your seven year old. Uh, you know, you're not going to show your seven year old uh, Billy okay. Madison. What? Well, yeah. You're not gonna. Yeah. You're gonna show I mean, your seven-year-old Billy Madison. You can, and we watched it when we were little. But think about it now. You in your head, first, I think I, the first time I ever watched Billy Madison was probably like I was eight or nine years old, and right. Yeah. And, that's a and different time. Sleepover. Different it was time. so funny. The one scene where the one uh, dude, uh, he like he like fakes um, wetting his pants to make his buddy feel better. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And the old lady go. What did she say? She goes. Uh, she goes, if, if wetting your pants is cool, I'm uh, Bruce Spring or something like that, like the man. Right. And, like, that was so, that had me dying yeah. even when I was young. And that's the thing, though. Like, our parents' generation would, like, if you had cool parents or parents who, you know, were work, work somewhat chill and know what comedy does and, you know, you're not a complete imbecile. But we saw those movies at a young age. I don't know a parent nowadays, other than like ones I'm really close with, that have that same comical belief system still. But a vast majority of parents, and the way like the narrative of the way life goes is, is young people are not they're, they're nurtured, they're baby, they're not going to see movies like that. That's just the way it is. So I'm guessing you guys feel the same way then about the Austin Powers films, like those would just would not those would not get made today. In I, your guys' opinion. I think really? that you, if they rearrange from, the characters, yeah. if there was a strong woman lead in it or a strong minority lead, wait. So be. Then now you're confusing me. So is it a, a filtration of it's a what filtration. We, we what we it's can a say case or by case basis? It's yeah. It's, okay, so you're telling me Austin Powers is the way it stands right now with the roles of the people and the actors. If there's actors similar to them from like their age, right? If you mm-hmm. could replace all them, like Vern Troy wasn't dead, you had someone like him, that would not happen. It okay, happen again. but you're telling me if we all right, let's switch, let's switch, yeah. gen, let's switch the genders mm-hmm. of. If Austin Powers was a woman, uh, if Austin, and you're the telling bad me guy was a white man, like there was. You're saying the the same the jokes stand. Everything stays. No way. Hundred percent. No way. Hundred percent, dude. I'm I'm one hundred percent. hundred percent on board with you and saying that. Uh, you know, we're a little more. They were the jokes wins. Like, they wouldn't stick the same because it's not the well, same people saying duh, it. But, but I'm but not. If they rearrange the jokes a little bit. The idea that movie would still be put in, no in theaters. Way. 100%. No, they'd be dumbed down a little. So you're, 100%. so you're telling me there'd be a lot worse jokes too. Because that's what I'm saying. Movie. Okay, I'm not saying it's but, the exact same jokes, and they would be dumbed down a little bit because it's time. But I'm but saying it'd at be, least that movie would be. It'd be put the in same. The, it'd be the same framework. That, is what you're saying? I'm saying. I'm yeah. saying that movie wouldn't come close to being produced if it was if they. And it's kept not the just all the jokes. It's just the way the movie so is. So you guys are saying it's not just There's no thought. It's not just a matter of filtering 
what kind of jokes are getting made. You, you guys are also saying who makes those jokes is also getting filtered well, yeah, now. Yeah, because yes. you think about who directs the movie. Hollywood, right? right. Yeah. Hollywood has a narrative, 100%. Because that's yeah. that's a narrative that actors have to like Vince Vaughn didn't agree with what Hollywood had to say a lot of things. Vince Vaughn gets fucking canceled. He did. He doesn't. He, he did doesn't. you see him in a movie recently? I just figured the guy was old. No, no. Vince Vaughn is he's like he's sixty or fifty something. The the dude can't get in a movie. He doesn't want to. He doesn't want to act for these directors who are corrupt and have this whole narrative that they're going to produce what the the people want to see. Really? And the people is what Hollywood wants. He's one of the best me. actors. This all is Sunday time. night. You guys are depressing me here. You tell me. It's you the tell world me. we live in. It's depressing. Why do you think? Why do you think Leonardo DiCaprio sits on there and talks about why America is so bad at polluting the world? And takes his private and then, jet, and then, and then goes and takes that's a, that's the, the ocean. That's yacht. a whole different debate. I don't know how the actors. Uh, no, that's the entire about, culture though. of our country. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, though. I don't. I no, don't. What we, we were talking about. They completely applies. Is when you're talking about making a movie. Is those all those things add up? Is who fills it's the, the same role? reason? What's her name from Mandalorian got canceled? It, dude, I would, I would, Hollywood could even take my money on this one. I would go to the theater and watch this one. If they recreated Wedding Crashers with two chicks, I would watch it. I would watch it, and they'd make it. I know they would make it. If, so you, if they, but if, you, if they tried re- releasing Wedding Crashers and kept the jokes at the same level and they showed the same stuff, I don't know if that's coming out. I don't know if they're releasing that. Do you think, yeah, okay, so I guess... How many, I mean, that's uh, you guys are depressing me. I, I I'm 100 percent on board for the whole thing of that. You know, people are a little softer today than they used to be, mm-hmm. and you know, jokes are probably a little more politic. You know, what we, de- what we define as politically is, charged. What we to de- a no, side. no, no, no. What we define as politically correct. I'm not going to say things are politically charged. Being but politically correct is politically charged. Yeah, that's the same thing. Okay, so, but you guys, you guys are also in a sense saying that. It's also a whole, you know, now you're thinking that we have to put certain people in certain positions. It's not thinking. And, it's true. It's, it's, no. So it, you haven't it, seen it, Mandalorian I, I wouldn't say I'm thinking this way, but it's, I'm basing what I'm saying off of what has happened and what's right. happening. So, like, I, no, no. I saw, the I, saw the, I saw the news about... Yeah. The, I saw it's that. It's because she didn't agree with Disney's... Right. Well, I, no, I, now I saw... She had different beliefs. No, I saw... You know, and I I saw it on, you know, a site that was probably swayed one side, but I saw that she got fired because she made, you know, whatever joke on her Twitter that was, like, not politically correct. But then the site goes on to show the meme that she posted, and I was like, what? I, I, I was genuinely like, oh, what? what is she? Is she really making? Because then they say, like, she was, she compared America to the Holocaust or something like that, and then... She was joking or, about how... Even her co-star, what the was, Mandalorian, Pedro Pascal, mm-hmm. he made Holocaust like jokes. Oh, that's about, that's what it was. Yeah, he right. did that. So mm-hmm. she was like, "I can make one too," which her joke was more accurate. Okay. Everybody does it already. You so for years, Trump and his supporters were called Nazis. Mm-hmm. She was doing a play on that, saying, "Wait a second, no, they're not," and then compared Democrats to them. She was doing a play on a joke that other people were already making, and they didn't like that. So they canceled her. Okay, so you you think it's you think that it's not just because in this case she's a woman, right? So she's a very strong woman. She is the right. definition of a powerful strong woman. Okay, so but in but the argument that you guys have made thus far is that women have this somewhat of an advantage when it comes to the film not industry. No, 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 no. No, oh, okay, okay. I'm not saying they don't women. have an advantage. No, oh. no, they don't have an advantage. Oh, okay, so I'm misunderstanding you because yeah, when when you say that. That like, like Austin re- Powers and Wedding if they re- Crashers. If they, re- re- if they put Austin Powers as Austina Powers, right? It's just like the Take ju- money. It's just okay. It's you can even out. go back to the Joe oh, Rogan so skit. What? Harvina Weinstein. We are going. We are going all over the place. Oh, we're all over the place. Oh my god! It's all the same topic. Harvina Weinstein. Yeah, that's funny joke. I I agree yeah. with I agree with everything about. that he says in that joke. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think that joke is hilarious, and I don't think that joke is too soft. No, no not at all. It's right. completely accurate. If you don't too. like that joke, then you're too soft. That's just but a simple you answer. You can apply that joke 
to every situation we're talking about right yeah. now. So when we so for the audience, I'm gonna quote or not quote. I mean, if I do quote it, I'm quoting it right now. Whatever, Joe. M- misquoting um, whatever it is. Yeah, I'll loosely quote what he, what the joke was. So it's a joke where Harvey, because everyone knows Harvey Weinstein did some pretty effed up things to you know actresses who are just trying to make it right. So if they wanted to get a role in one of his movies or whatever, they had to do some sexual activity with them right to get in. Right, awful piece of shit. It was awful. Should be tortured, whatever, straight to the boiler room of hell type thing, right? Joe's spin on it was, is that everyone's sexist to men for this simple fact. If you switched the gender roles and you made Harvey Weinstein, Harvina Weinstein, and you made the actresses actors, right? No one would talk about it. Because if you're in a bar setting, right? Let's say you're at the local bar, pull up, and your buddy's gonna get hammered, whatever. You pull up in a Ferrari. That's his, that's his thing, you pull up in a Ferrari. The guys at the bar go, that's a nice car, man. How'd you get it? And the guy goes, man, I had to eat pussy to get that. And they're like, are you going to be okay? Are you going to be okay? I thought, I thought the, quote was, the, the quote was, dude, suck it up. You're going to be Batman. Oh, that's yeah. well, like, we're getting there, right? So he's, <laughs> that's the thing is no one cares that you're, that you're a dude. That's what he keeps saying. You're, no one cares that you're a guy, right? So if he goes, um, if Harvey Weinstein did that to your daughter, right? We would burn that motherfucker at the stake tonight, right? But if Harvino Weinstein came to my son with a solid contract, I'd be like, dude, you're going to be Batman. And that is all and Joe that's, quote. And that's, that's straight up quoted. That, uh, that's I give him full credit dude, for that. Dude, you're going to be Batman. That is that's exactly so how it works, though. No, that's what we're using our point right. of view. We're saying is um, not that women have an advantage because they don't. Right, they definitely don't have an advantage. If anything, it's a disadvantage for exact reasons like right. Harvey Weinstein. No, no, no. I yeah, that's why I was. All I was just, of that. I was just making sure that. No, we're not. We're not blurring those lines. Okay. Because I, w- I was getting confused by you guys. What were no, you no, no, no. Not blurring those lines at all. But I will say is, is that because for such a long time, right, men have held that position like Harvey Weinstein hold held. Right. We're now looking at a culture where we're recognizing <laughs> that as being so horribly bad that we're not going to even make roles like that in movies. Not like Harvey Weinstein, but anything that resembles or comes close to the male dominant presidents, even racial wise, like white people, white men, that role is getting subdued. And that's because of these perfect examples like that. So when you're th- looking at a movie, right, in Hollywood, they're so, they're so diehard set on this, which that's whatever you want to choose your own narrative to be, choose your own narrative, right? But when it comes down to the end of the day, making movies, Make movies however you want, right? But you'll never see another movie like that, like any of these movies we talk about. You're never going to see Austin Powers. You're not going to see Happy Gilmore. You're not going to talk at Anchorman. You're not going to see a movie where they sexualize a woman character. It's not going to happen. But you will see The Blind Side where Sarah, you know, my, my lady, uh, she comes through. Sandra and, Bullock. Sandra Bullock comes through. Tim McGraw is the husband. Or, and then the the head coach of the football team, um, Blanking on what the act like the in the in the movie name is of him. Oh, the name? coach. Yeah. Uh, I don't remember. No, I can't remember. Um, You're talking about the scene though, where she she like, she uh, comes into practice, walks in there, strong woman, lover, right? Walks in there, tells Michael what he needs to do, gets it through to him. He gets it. She walks away, right? But on her way in, she slaps the coach on the ass. Reverse those <laughs> roles, please. Not gonna happen. If a, if a dad walks into but a volleyball practice, if a dad walks into a volleyball practice, slaps the woman, slaps coach. The woman coach on the ass and says, "Honey, this is what we gotta do." Dude, Sarah here is gonna set it for you, and you're gonna spike it on freaking Ashley's dumbass face, right? And that's what's gonna happen. And you walk out, and you might grab a little side on, on the way. On, it's on. not gonna happen. All right, not gonna happen. Also, that I I get what you're saying, but. I'm pretty sure that scene that that scene from the movie that actually happened in real life, like that. Yes. No, no, no. I like agree. Michael Michael Orr's mom but was if it like. Happened was like, in real life the other way. They wouldn't include it. Uh, I okay. It's it's comical relief because it's a woman I'm sorry. slapping the I'm, male coach. I'm sorry. Ass. I'm very very yeah. slow today. No, no, as, no, as you can tell. Late at night, but I'm, the, the, the point is, is stuff like that. It, I get that it sells now because. That's funny. I found that funny. I think it's funny when a woman oh, slaps was, a guy in the no, ass. No, that it's was funny. one of the best scenes it's ever. Funny. Think about when it, he walks in, in your head, are you going to sit there and say, if a guy did that to a girl, what would you think? No, yeah, exactly. Even if I I'd be like, oh, that's, like, come on. Like, that's horrible. Right. Yeah. Because a woman's doing it, it's funny. Right? But even us sitting here saying we have the clarity of seeing that, we still believe that would be fucked up if a guy did it. Yeah. Am I wrong? No. 
I we have the clarity in our minds. Yeah, yeah saying no, no, no. If, that's fucked if up. If I watch yeah, no, no. if I watch I wouldn't, th- I wouldn't think that's funny. I'd be like, oh, that's that's a little weird. Mm-hmm. But no, that's all. I would. You would. There would be an issue. There would be a controversy happening right then. There would right. be a confrontation happening at that moment. But I, I, but I can't think of any movie in the past that would have made that joke. Any, anyways, where a guy does it. Yeah. No. I. That's you what I'm saying. Watched any of them because they're so bad. No. There is. There is old movies where dudes completely sexually harass women in it for no oh, yeah. like just for that's that's how culture what like even nowadays right. like that's the whole thing is people women get sexually abused why are you highlighting it in a movie that's what they're that's what they're fighting against as gotcha. it happens it still happens that's the issue right it still happens men men get sexually harassed by women too women but more you just so did than, it right there right and men also get sexually harassed and you played it over like it was nothing right exactly but that's the problem well okay here's the thing i didn't play it over like it's nothing this is a, because yeah. women still get Men, okay, men get sexually harassed and, and sexually whatever assaulted more You're than... You're proving your own point. No, 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 shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up, but let me talk. Men get more sexually assaulted than women do, per capita. By other men. By other men. Okay, cool, I get that. But I'm trying to explain Hollywood's narrative, Anthony. I'm not saying I agree with what I'm saying, yeah. but I'm saying from Hollywood's perspective, women are a minority, right? They're not in power. They're a wage gap, this, that, the other thing. Why are we highlighting them getting held down by the system? That's what they're looking at it as. So if you're going to see a scene where Sandra, or you know, Sandra Bullock goes through and slaps an ass, you're going to see that for the rest of your life on, on Earth. But you'll never see a movie where, as comic relief, a man slaps a girl in the ass. It's not going to happen. Yeah. Not that it would be good comic relief anyways. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. It's not going to happen. Just like how... Yeah, but I don't you're never going to see an Austin Powers movie again. And you're never going to see Billy Madison again because it's not going to happen. But you might see a woman fl- right. flipping through a boy, a boy, you know, a nudie uh, man magazine. You might see that. No, I don't think. You, d- you I think we're just. That. I think we're just getting away from that that type of joke. I think we're making different types of jokes. I under- I understand everything that you guys have said. I'm I'm not sure if I'm a hundred percent on board. I, all right, hold on. I'm not sure. I fully understand understand your guys' point. I think I get the gist of it, and you know, for the most part, you know, I can understand where you're coming from. Uh, I think it's more of a you know cultural change. Personally, I don't even think I don't. I don't even really like the idea of Hollywood at all. Yeah. Um, the idea that we that we idol the idea that we idolize these people that are you know you know talented. Yeah, it's it's tough sometimes to watch. So the it, difference in sports. Well, okay, but here's the thing. Here's my difference with between this and sports. Sports, you prove that you're you're the best. Right. Actors do too. Actors do too. So do directors. Do you think? You, Are you, you going to go there you, and make Billy you Madison? Might, you might think this because no. you relate more with athletes than you do with actors. Well, that's true. No, that's true. But I'm saying I think it's more accessible for people to ridicule. No, no, no. Like, I, I want to. I, I want to. I don't want. I want to word this the right way. I feel like it's a lot easier for someone to go hey i want to start playing basketball right like i think it's a lot easier for a kid to go hey i want to start playing basketball and he goes and joins the cyo and he or you know the cyo team or whatever um and he starts playing and you know he gets good and you know maybe coaches recognize that and he gets to the better aau teams because he heard somebody heard about this and that and you know yeah. it's easier for kids to get yeah you know recognized there but i feel like with acting yeah. Yes. The the actors in Hollywood have, for the most part, proved that they are the best. But I feel like they've only proved that they are the best based on those that actually went for it. Like I feel like not as many people go for acting. Does that make no? Yeah, of course does, not. Does that? I feel like acting is not as accessible as yeah, sports is. That that's almost the reason why I understand why we look at athletes and I'm like wow. Like respect, like you made it. You're in the oh, top. We're not talking about. We're not talking about respect here. Right. We're no, talking about I'm idolization. About no, yeah. I'm, I'm just saying. No, well, okay, then yes. If you, okay. I agree with you guys in saying yes. We do the same thing to athletes. Yes. And is it warranted? Is I guess is where my debate comes in. I feel like. I don't it, think people should be. I don't think you idolization should, because you're good at dunking basketball. My opinion. Right. My well, opinion. Yeah. My, I guess my bad. You, you, my bad. Long, you, you, you were born six eight, and you could jump with a forty inch vertical, and you know how to put words together well on an open mic. Great, but you're not the godfather of the country. Right. Okay. I promise. That's fair enough. Um, 
but yeah, like the, like the idolization thing is. I think idolization in general is just. No, yeah, no, I don't think idolizing is good. Period. But I was just, yeah, I don't really know where I was going with that. I, I guess. <laughs> no, it's no, good. no. I guess, yeah. I like get, I just, relate. I, I don't think any of us here relate to acting the way that we re- right. relate to sports or athletics. But like in that same thing is like go back. You people idolize people like Leonardo DiCaprio for why? What does he do for you? What, is the, what does that guy do for you? It's easy to idolize LeBron James for some people because he built that school in Akron, right? He does, he claims to do stuff. He does stuff for a community, right? And that community is widespread and there's a lot of people that support that idea. It's easy to idolize someone who's doing good things, but then what's the justification for idolizing someone like Leonardo DiCaprio? What does he do? He doesn't Nothing. do anything. Right. He goes to other countries and bitches about us, bitches about our, his country he's from. But he doesn't do anything to change anything. But people, and that's all Hollywood is, though, is there's there's people, most people in Hollywood are like him, where it's they're idolized, but they don't really right. do anything. Well, the thing is, is like there are some people. There are that's some why people. award right. shows are jokes. Well, no, okay, so the one award the what is the award, award shows? shows the one award show that I really liked award shows gotcha. um was what was his name Ricky whatever and it was like his third time hosting oh um, Ricky Gervais or whatever Ricky Gervais and he came yeah. out and he was like roasted all of you shit, yeah man. and he roasted that I love that because yes, you know what, what I think he nailed it right in the head. You come up here, you accept your little award, and you know we don't care what platform. That's that's where I'm at, right? Yeah, you I don't act. I don't care what you have to I don't say. Care, I don't care what you have to say. They're not normal at, people. At the Actors right, aren't normal people. Right um, at, at the right time, out. at the right time, and at the right setting. If you want to have a say, go ahead and do that, right? But we all at the same point, we should you know we should hold them accountable to the words that they say. If they say, "Oh, oh my God, I cannot believe that this issue is happening in the world." Well, we should hold them accountable to say, well, what have you what done? Are you doing for them? Yeah, if you're if you're going to use your platform to say something, use your f- platform to do something as well. Double-edged sword. I think that's what we, as a society, need to start doing. Because, and the reason I say this, the reason that this like just becomes glaringly evident to me, is, um, who was it? Oh, Kevin Bacon was on um, the one talk show with the European guy. I'm not sure if you've ever seen that. Which European guy. Um, Bacon with the European. Bald guy. Show. He sits in the chair. Uh, he's always got his note cards right there. I can't think of it. I just saw it today. Um, it's like orange. The aesthetic is like orange chairs or whatever. I, I can't remember it. Uh, I'll, I'll have to whatever. think. But yeah. But all right. So anyways, so he's on it and he's he's like. Uh, you know, he's like, you know, as an actor, you know, people like idolize you. You walk around and everyone notices you and, you know, you get free stuff and people come up to you and you get out of tickets and you get, right? Like, okay. That in itself is kind of like insane. Like, you know, like we're given, but that is the reality, right? But then he goes on to say, you know, but but I wanted to see what it would be like to go a, a day not noticed. So he's like, I go to this mall in California, real big mall. And if you're, if you're, a uh, actor and you know people know you if i would have walked out like my normal self people would have flocked to me and i probably would have gotten free stuff at the same time i would have had to sign autographs or whatever he's like but i went in with this uh disguise on and, and nobody recognized me and it sucked well like welcome to reality that's what everybody's life is you walk past a stranger and you're not gonna sit there and go oh my god oh my god are you are you dominic tizio oh my god oh my god like so I just think the whole idea that actors are, you know, built up that way. Like I don't, I don't think we should. It's not good for people, right? I think we should. I don't think we should gawk at them. And I, and if you want to say the same thing, at athletes, sure, fine. I'm I'm on board with that. I mean, I don't. I res- I in a sense have respect for athletes because, like I said, to me, I think they've proven more. Yeah, absolutely. That, that they are worthy of. Like, well, that's the thing, though, is, like, how many athletes... Because the thing... Okay. Athletes. Most successful athletes. Men, right? Right? Right. Well, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. So, when you look at the acting industry, yes, men. Up, right? But there are more women in the acting industry in Hollywood than there are, like, successful women in sports. And it's right, not yeah. really a content, like it's not really a competition. No, yeah. So when you look at stuff like that, I'm thinking, I'm sitting here like, okay, um, I can see how certain people 
there's more there's slightly more diversity in the acting industry for people to have an idol for i get that there's more like range of people who want to look at that and say hey i can somewhat relate to this person or they at least they think they can relate to this person but they really can't and i so i see how people will kind of fall for that um but i don't really see how people do that for sports i see that people like like they see mj they see lebron they see tom brady and they're like okay yeah i'm not debating that none of them are the goat right but i'm gonna sit here and say is yeah do you know how many people in this country or in the world come out from the gutter poor right what and this is super depressing right but what makes an an individual other than hope right what makes an individual think to look at that person and go oh i relate to them because in my opinion lebron james poor person from ohio right grows up becomes was he a billionaire got to be probably off of endorsement deals he makes hundreds of millions off nike he got to he probably is well, someone pull up, his pull up his network okay so he's got a network so you look at him right yep he's as relatable to let's say a young poor african-american child in ohio as i am relatable to will ferrell and it's not it's like i'm i get it he's halfway 500 million 500 Sorry. million so i get it there's a culture thing. If you're a minority, you see a minority do like successful, great things. I get that. Just like how if you see if you're a Hispanic and you see a young Hispanic lady and you see Selena Gomez make it, right? I see that. But I don't see how you can idolize them so much to where they're influencing your day-to-day decision and how you think and breathe and act on certain things. Right. And those people, there's so many of them. Like when you look in Hollywood and you look in sports, and that's the funny thing is we said it's easier to, I said it's easier to see idols in Hollywood, but there's so many more people idolized in Hollywood than there are in sports. Okay. So when you're looking at Hollywood, they have this persona built up. Like celebrities, they walk out of a store and they get noticed, right? Athletes do that too. I mean, don't get me wrong, they do that too. But the way I look at it is, is there's somewhat of a reason for people to see a celebrity and go i relate to that person but i don't see i see zero reason why people could ever relate like i could physically actually relate to either celebrity or an athlete but i do see also zero reason why they should want to why do you want why do you want to relate right to them it doesn't make any sense no i i think relating what, wealth no i think popularity. i think popularity i think relating is one thing but like like you said like completely idolizing them to the point where you're like oh if they said to do this that's what i'm going to do i think that's where it becomes dangerous if you want to relate to them fine if you want you know if you want to look up to them cool if you want to you know hey you know lebron or you know lebron just said you work your hardest and 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 work hey that's like that's something you listen to right, right. but like once they get into their stance you you as a person should go hold on do i agree tune out a little bit do i agree with it yeah before before you just like jump on board because you might agree with someone like for let's say their job acting you might love an actor right right or sports you might love a sports player it doesn't mean you have to like their politics. It doesn't mean you have to like the way they think. Right, 100%. Right? So, like... Um, you can like someone's work ethic and not like... Exactly. The, the exactly. reason they have their work so ethic. So, that's the best thing is when you think about that is that's why Hollywood is such a, such a good example of people who are so rotten to the core there is that these crazy, wild, wildly successful people past, their, past your imagination are sitting there, fat pockets, preaching one thing when the thing that they're preaching will never get you to where they are, never will get you to where they are. If you, for a second, think that anything that they say when they accept that Oscar nomination got them to where they are today, no, it doesn't happen. But, but their work ethic might have. The strings that they pulled might have. Right? The way they got there is completely different than what they preach. And that's you know kind of the issue that you're looking at idolization. Is right. Even you look at... I, presidents, why do you idolize someone? It doesn't no, make sense no. to me. No, I don't think it, that. I think the current, past, 
right. you know, for the last 46, whatever, why do you idolize someone? No, no, I think it's very... I just don't think idolizing anybody is really that healthy. Right, no, you can no. admire things about people or take life lessons from other people's lives that they've already lived, but saying that you want to be someone is just wrong. Yeah. Why not just be your own individual self? And think for yourself. Don't yeah. think the way other people think. Stop be different. Stop letting people tell you what to do right. or I think what it's, to think. I think we're all on the same side of this. Yeah, yeah uh, absolutely. Yeah. I hope, uh, I hope a lot of people are, to be honest. Yeah, no, honestly, I think I think a lot, part is, a lot of people aren't. Yeah, that is, that is. That's the sad part, and it, then it goes right back to all the movies. Well, stuff. I don't, I don't know if I don't know if it's so much that people aren't on the same side. That, you know, I don't think that there are people that are like, oh yes, you should idolize them, and you should. I just think that there are people that don't recognize that them. don't recognize yeah. that they do that. They're not aware of it. Right. Well, that's the whole thing. It's, right. They don't it's a whole motivational thing too. Little side note, because I didn't get, get to slip this in earlier. Mm -hmm. Um. But since we're still on actors, I guess it somewhat kind of connects. We were talking about Waterboy a lot earlier, right? Mm -hmm. I'm on the phone today with Danielle, and I go, well, my mom was said, my mom was said, and she goes, like, doesn't react. I'm like, um. That's weird. I'm like, do you not know what movie that's from? And she goes, uh, yeah, I do. I go, what movie is it from? She goes, Forrest Gump. What? That's crazy. I go. I Maybe go. You're just a really bad actor. I go, no, listen. Put your girlfriend on blast. I go. Uh, hold on. Yeah, no. In front of 320 no, people. No, hold on. I get this is this is a blast worthy moment because then I hit it with, I go, I go. Hold on. You didn't you didn't get that? And she goes, no. So I hang up the phone. I call back. I go, H two or no. I go Gatorade, H two O. Gatorade. No, no dude, What are you doing? Dead face, looking at me like. I'm like, I can't hit her with back to back quotes uh, from the same movie. She uh, obviously uh, hasn't seen it. I hang up. I, hang, I call back. I go, Adam Sandler movie. I don't know. And I'm like, oh my gosh. Gotta what? get some culture going. Oh my on. God. This, this is, it was almost as bad as when I went shake and bake and there was, no, there was nothing. I mean, two, two movies that everyone has to know is, or at least see. Is See at some point. Waterboy. Waterboy more so than Talladega. Yeah, oh, Waterboy for but, sure more than Talladega Nights. But both definitely. But both definitely. Yeah. Because, I, I mean. Anthony's got a sticker of it on there yeah. right now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> if you ain't first, first, you last. You last. Yeah. And, <laughs> and he's like, I've been living my whole life by that, Dad. He goes, I saw that, that when I was, was high. <laughs> Smoking weed. You could be second, you could be third, you yeah. could be fourth. There's a whole lot of places. <laughs> hey, let's go get kicked out of Applebee's. <laughs> Anyways, does it and gets it done. <laughs> oh, At least he held up on what he was saying. Yeah, it was so funny. What time did we start recording? Oh, uh, we're an hour and thirty. Yeah, uh, hour thirty ish. Hour thirty, not bad. Ish. Okay. Right. Okay. But yeah, so I just had I had to put it on blast real quick because that's you know that goes out to all all and anybody watching this. Please educate yourself. Watch the Water Boy and educate yourself in the ways of Adam Sandler. Well, just, I mean, not even Adam Sandler. I just feel like that's such Probably a classic. A yeah. yeah. I mean, and if you don't, if you don't find it funny, I, I, it's tough to say. I that's kind fine. Of, just don't yeah, talk to me. I kind of understand, but please try to understand why we find it funny. I mean. No, it's funny. Just, it's funny. Just don't text me to hang out. That's fine. <laughs> that's I, don't know right. if I'm, I don't know if I'm that diehard about it, but. I'm not diehard about it, but if chances are, if you don't like the humor. Probably not gonna vibe too much. Sorry. Yes, I am. Right, but you know, people change. No, people <laughs> change. Because people change. No, never. <laughs> people do not change. <laughs> They're the same person. Do we do we attack this now or do no. we? Do you no. It? no. Nah, I dare not. I dare not. We'll leave that. Man said, yeah, this, we'll man let said, that. this man said, "I dare not." I dare not. He dare not. I dare not. Do you know why? Because there are like 30 people that might get to this point in the podcast. I don't know about you guys. I only know of two people that actually got through the entire thing. Ask. If you look at the YouTube analytics for the last one, about 5% actually watched more than nine minutes of it. Well, I got... Wow. Wow. <laughs> that sucks. It does suck. I, I only know of one person that actually got through the entire thing because uh, she went... Or, no, I know of two people because they both said the same thing. They go... Hey Paul Bart, I go what? And they go the podcast. I go oh. the last ten minutes. Yeah, I go. I go. You got that part? And they go. They go. Well, yeah. I mean, you told you told us to watch it. I'm like, 
much. Well, good looks. Respect. Educate some other people, maybe. Yeah, I think for... this podcast is a lot better than the last one, for sure. This was loaded. I was not ready for this. No, not at all. No. Uh, good, though. Yeah, uh, I, no, definitely. There's a little bit more direction than the last one, for sure. No, definitely. Well, and Hopefully I th- we get better from here on out. But yeah. the thing is, who cares about direction that much? I get no. it. Like, yeah. you don't want to be bouncing off the walls. No, no, no. But, I think part of a conversation is to... But you Explore. could bring other ideas in and talk about different concepts. And I think it was, you know, it's cool that we all had kind of like three different little points of view, whereas like this last... You don't need to make everything black and white. Right, yeah. yeah. But, I mean, hey, if you're watching this and you've gotten an hour and 30 in and you want to hear us talk about something, let us know. Oh, yeah, for real. Drop it in the yeah, comments because, or something. Uh, guys, the best description of this podcast that I've heard yet was from uh, one of my friends. She goes, so it's just a bunch of guys sitting down and bullshitting. I go, yeah, pretty much. That's literally what it is. It's, we're, we're shooting the shit. Um, you got to understand, we're not making this, like, trying to, to blow up. If we blow up. Yeah, so, that should never be your goal. Yeah, right. you know, if, if we blow up, so be it. Um, we have a little free time and, and we. Have some fun, expand your market. Whatever. Right, yeah. Hey. It's always good to record past opinions, see your growth. Right, yeah. Yeah, hey, maybe and. A couple, maybe even a couple months, a couple years, you you might go back on it and go, hey, I was wrong. It's no different than, like, if I'm hanging out with my friends, especially Ethan. He'll do it all to me all the time and, like, complain if I record something. But a year from now, watching a video that I recorded of us screwing around and doing something funny is worth it to me. Well, yeah, no, I, no. Imagine it'll be, like, two, 40 years from now. Right, yeah. I record everything because... I know what it's like to go back and watch family videos. Right. Imagine going back and watching everything you do with your that's friends. That's the you ever see the post. It's if uh, what amount of money would you pay to watch the thirty best minutes of your life with your yeah. friends? So why not just start recording? You would pay anything. You know why? Why? Give me a time frame of my of your entire life. My entire life. You get it, it's you pay. It. Ask me how many of the, the friends that I still like hang out with. But that wouldn't would be the best time of your life. Then. Exactly. <laughs> well, because that's up for debate then. Because you're telling me that there haven't been people that have came into your life, and you at the time were having a blast. The, exactly. So that's the thing. And now no, they've left. I, I've never had other than like a few, a handful. I can count on one hand about people who have came into my life, had a blast with, and left toxically. Right. Well, I'm not saying I'm not saying it's a ton. I'm just saying like there, it does happen. Yeah, but, but I'm saying like if now if you're going like highlights of like the people that are still in my life, oh dude, it's it's infinite. I would I would give you, anything. It doesn't to see matter. That. That's the whole thing though. You don't have to still be in your life to right. see the highlight. No, now no, maybe no. if you didn't, if there's a certain person in particular you're thinking about that you didn't want to yeah, yeah, yeah. think about. That's fair. That's fine. That's but, fair. Like of course that's gonna happen. Like I I, yeah. I think the same Part way. Of growing. But yeah. if I if I could see, I'm talking. It's thirty minutes. So every single second of that 30 minutes is filled of a, a highlight that is, when I say highlight, I mean the definition of highlight, the best 30 minutes. Sports in our top 10 up on that bitch. The best 30 minutes of your life with you and your friends. And it's just the funniest moments. Dude, I think. Life. I would, I would probably pay, like, okay, if I was, if I collected that, even if the number grew to like, if you get to watch an hour's worth mm-hmm. and I was like 50 middle age or even old man. I'd probably pay a lump sum. Yeah. I'd probably right. pay a good amount of something to well, see that. And here, here's the thing, though, is like, um, I forget what I was going to say now. Fuck. Oh, the, I think the best part about that whole idea is that highlights to you, if somebody else watched your highlights, they might think, well, why? They don't get it. Yeah, they don't, they don't understand it. That's the best it. part. That's the best. I think that is the best part about, and like you said, when you record something and, you know, it, it, say it does come up, you're like, you're like, Haha, I remember this day, and then you get to tell the little story about behind it and remember it. Like, and I agree, the whole family home videos. I'm not sure about you guys, but um, one time I threw in a family home video, and it was like before my parents had kids, so it was like when they were in college. Hilarious. Yeah. It's so funny. They we had every single Christmas our entire life. Yeah, recording. same here. Same here. Yeah. Like those are great to go watch. So They're I kind of took that. I took that as like a. Oh my god! No way! No, like, this is this no. is literally this is oh Anthony. God. Every gift he opened. Let's from like, even age me. Group. like I washed out. He watched me open. Go, that's so sweet. Or no, something he, like that. He go, he go, oh sweet! Oh sweet! That's so cool, oh, Dominic. Sweet. That's Fav- awesome. Favorite, oh my god! No way! Sweet. Favorite Christmas video moment of all time is my mom. My so everyone probably gets the same talk of if you open a gift and you don't like it. You have to pretend like you like it, right? Like when you go to yeah, your extended family, right. right? Every Christmas morning, it would be my mom's family and my aunt's family 
or, so my mom's sister that would go to my grandparents' house, have breakfast, and then we would just exchange gifts. And this Christmas Eve would be the whole well, the whole extended family, right? So this was like kind of like a little side gig. So you only really got a parent, uh, another present from yeah, your right, grandma, right, grandpa, right. right, right. So me and my cousin, at the same time, open up a gift, and we and we're like six at the time or whatever, and we go, "Oh no way! I got clothes!" And some and my cousin goes, "Yeah, me too!" And like you can it's just the worst hear, acting you can ever. Just, yeah, just the worst. That's so like bad. Six years, um, I got clothes. Yeah, Kids, me too. And it's a weird fad. It's a weird fad, Christmas gifts. The, they yeah. go from Nerf guns and Wii controllers and Wii sports and whatever, and now it, it's like... I'm when excited you, to open a pack of underwear. Right, cash. Right. <laughs> no, no, really no, no, cash no. clothes are all kids want when you start when you hit like 16, 17 up. I'm on board That's with the whole you, underwear and well, underwear and socks. Underwear, underwear and socks? When I, I, get a pair, when I get a pair of socks for Christmas, I'm like, let's go. Money in the bag. I don't know about anymore. you. I don't know about you guys how your guys' relationship was because it's just the two of you. But me, well, all right, it's not just me and my brothers, but it's like our whole house. We were we're not good at keeping socks together, oh. right? So we have like two two baskets of just socks, and every morning it's like, okay, hurry up and find a pair and throw nice. them on, right? It causes so many issues when we get when we get a new pair of socks. You're like, these are mine. Don't touch my socks. Yeah. Within a week, they're in, they're in that sock bin, and you're really? like, yeah, you're looking for them. And then, so best example is the ones I have on right now, or not not these ones, but I have these gray socks, and on the bottom of them are is like a little white G and S or something like that. And my brother got ones that were like orange on the bottom, right? And my mom's like, so if you ever see some. You know, each other with the other pair of socks on, you call them out, right? Like, first day. Buddy's or, got the white they, one on. First, first week, Buddy's got the white one on. I'm like, let me see the bottom of your foot, man. He goes, no. I go, let me see the bottom of your foot. Dude, I'm telling you, don't touch my socks. But now, like, now it doesn't matter. Now I got yeah. a pair of, Evan, I got a pair of your orange socks in my bag. I'm just letting you know right now. I'm probably going to get text if you get this far. But, yeah, um, as soon as they're in the sock, like, basket, fair game. Yeah. No, that it kind of used to be like that, but after all the me and Anthony spaced out in sizes, it didn't really matter anymore. Yeah, I don't know if that can fit in my fourteen socks. You want to know a really funny story? Socks, this is anyone, anyone, sizes. anyone. Hey, shut, yeah. up, shut up, shut up, shut oh. up. Anyone who is still, I'm sorry, this has got to be told before the podcast <laughs> ends. Anyone who's still here, this is your reward for staying for so long. Funniest. We're talking about underwear and socks, right? Funniest story I can think of off of this from like childhood. Me, oh, Anthony, okay. underwear and socks. I'm. 11 12 right i wake up morning i have a f- hour and 15 minute drive for my cio basketball game right mm-hmm. in the basement in the dark digging through a laundry basket i need a pair of underwear grab a black pair cool right i'm wearing whatever i have like i wear my my travel clothes or whatever and i get to the game i change for the game right right the underwear i had on that like i was sleeping in were like pajama underwear right so they kind of patterned or whatever like yeah, yeah, whatever yeah, yeah. so i'm like okay can't wear these so i get because i didn't think anything of it but go to change pull out anthony's underwear anthony by the, at that age anthony already spaced from me so i'm sitting here i put these underwear on this this pair of underwear on dude uh-huh. and i'm telling you i could hold it out like a fist's worth from the yeah. side of my body and i have to wear this pair of underwear no in way. this basketball game you're telling me you didn't just wear the pajama pair i that you wore that pair of underwear dude no in why that game. <laughs> and the entire game i'm sitting there like i rolled them over to like three times Duh. i rolled them over three times and like scrunchied it up and like tucked them in itself and then put my basketball shorts on why don't you just wear the pajama underwear Huh? Why don't you just wear your pajama underwear? They were, they were fucking patterned, dude. Who cares? If I sat down, white shorts on. Yeah, oh, I have white shorts. They're the, it's like the CYO white, yeah. white yeah. shorts. Yeah, 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 yeah. That sucks. So I'm sitting there, right? And I'm like, fuck. Okay, so I change into them. And I'm playing the game, right? And meanwhile, I'm struggling with it all warm up. So like, how am I going to do this? How am I going to do this? They suck. My pants are going to fall down. My shorts. My sh- the thing is, like, the CYO shorts were, like, silky slick, right? No. So yeah, like, I know exactly so, like, what you're on, talking about. They're on the underwear. So if the underwear go down, the slicky shorts are going down, too, right? <laughs> so I'm saying, I figure it out. I finally get to the point where it works. It sucks because everything's, it's so, like, so much breeze is going on. Everything is it's so bad. <laughs> Got 14 points and like eight assists. Oh yeah! I'm sitting there, I'm like double double. I'm We're like, wearing these underwear every game. I'm like, how am I gonna wear these underwear again, bro? How's it gonna happen? <laughs> this sucks. And the minute I get to the locker room, dude, I'm fucking 
chafed with motherfucker on I that bet. bitch. <laughs> Nothing was getting held anywhere. That shit Dog. sucked afterwards. Speaking of, but that was so hurt. I was I was so nervous playing that game. A kid would just bump me the wrong way, and everything was going down. Oh, that's so the court. I remember I shot it. I shot it like. This is like, I'm 12 years, 12 years old, right? So it's like I only shot like probably like I probably made like five threes all season, right? But I made like one or two in that game, and the first one I just shot was right in front of the away's like bench because they're playing like at like the local high school, and it was right, big. right, right. And they kind of filled out that, that section. One of those, not yet. Oh, okay. I was a little past that at that point, but. Um, uh, but I was in the front of the waist section. I remember going up for the shot, and the kid came to block me. But he like I shot it over him. I made that shot, but the kid landed. Like we went like quad to quad. Like when I came down, and like he started like it pulled down like a little bit, right. and it came to the point where the, like the underwear was loose. And so I'm running back on defense, messing with my shorts the entire time because I about to my little wee wee is about to come out, bro. Because I'm sitting there and I'm like, dude, this sucks. This sucks. This sucks. <laughs> it was my little wee wee. Huh? His home, home videos are about to be like under investigation. Oh what God. home videos? Anybody recording that game? Oh, I don't think I'm not sure. You had to ask Mr. <laughs> Mr. Weeks out for the team. I don't know. I didn't, my pants never fell down though. That would be funny. Pants never but fell if down. they did, it was a way game though. I don't think I don't think he was recording yet for a way basketball Any game. Parents in the world. No, I know, but I'm saying like I don't think anyone was recording the game. It was a joke. That's the point. Yeah, but that's okay. That's the point. point. Whatever. That was a horrible joke. That was the that's first. The that was the first. That's the point of this podcast. That was, <laughs> that was a bad one. That was a bad one. That was a bad one. But that's the point. Speaking of chafed, you guys ever gone to? Uh, <laughs> hold on, hold on. So you ever gone to uh, Disney World or like Cedar Point and you yeah. just, at the end of the day, you are just... I have a better story. Never rode a single on. ride at Cedar Point. Okay, listen. So Never rode a ride at Disney World. Really? Scared of heights. Couldn't get me on a roller coaster. Oh, what a bitch. Um, I'm a bitch, I'll tell you right now. Okay. I'm not getting on a roller coaster. I don't care if it's, I don't care if it's a junior motherfucking Gemini. I'm okay. not getting on that motherfucker. You're, you're a bitch. <laughs> Anyways, completely off topic. Um, So, we are in... Florida for my brother's wish trip, mm-hmm. right? Um, and we get to and dude, let me tell you, Florida in June so or no, 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 July, July, humid. No, thank you. So no, bad. thank, dude. So trip bad. was free. Thank, was 40, thank, it's thank you so much to uh, give kids the world. Um, and not the mate or give kids the world is you know where we stayed right. for the trip, but. Um, and Rainbow Connection is who the trip was from, so thank you to them for making it like such an unbelievable trip. It was insane. If they watch this, they'll yeah, they'll appreciate that. Yeah. But um, I can tell you, uh, you guys have seen my dad. My dad's a bigger guy, um, and he he's a business guy that wears uh, no matter what day of the week it is. If he's on his off day or if he's on uh, a work day he's wearing his golf his golf polo right and his you know slacks on his off day he might throw on jeans or whatever right or the regular dad, dad legend yeah, yeah, yeah i'm right. pretty sure when i pulled up to like his like this this, this last term summer right. term right like i was at home whatever and on the way mm-hmm. up i stopped at noah's house to pick up like a fan for him because it was yeah. like, hot in the dorms and on the way there i stopped at noah's like house and i opened like knocking on the door and his dad opens the door Michigan polo and yeah yeah and well no not Michigan are you sure I, definitely I not s- my dad is no I swear parents are diehard Michigan it's, State it might have been Detroit Tigers yeah Tigers for sure might have been, been, been Tigers might have been Tigers um, I think I, think I was, was about to say sure you got the blue. wrong house it was, it was dark blue I'm go sure. green it was dark blue shut up it was dark blue they suck it was dark blue hey they played bad today they played bad today I won't lie but um oh you didn't even know about it today. they suck. They don't suck. They suck. <laughs> They're like, oh my god, we beat Ohio State. Go they back to your dad's story. They okay. played a week. Back to my dad's story. So we're in, we're, you know, there for the trip, whatever. It is arguably the hottest day that we've been there all week. It's like Wednesday. Right. Um, and my mom thinks to herself, to herself, like, hey, let's go on the, uh, what, you know, the, like, water ride or whatever, right? The Lazy River one, where it's just, she thought it was just, we got on the tube and we, you know, go around the lazy river. Maybe it turns a little bit. Oh, dude. I went on that. Dude, oh, you get. Yeah, that? you listen. I you get. We got, so we got bad. soaked. And then it started pouring, like, as we were on the ride. And so we're wetter than wet, right? Mm-hmm. Well, you're not going to give up. You're at Disney. The once in a lifetime trip, right? So we're all day, all day, we're going, 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 right? All over the park. It's by far the most why walking you, yeah i don't know why you did that like the beginning of the day no i i seriously don't know my mom said it and and 
because we because it was raining at the point. And she's like, "Hey, we're gonna get wet anyways. We might as well, you know." She didn't realize how bad we did were. You getting. Smell, did you try smelling the dryers? Yes, yeah. dude. Uh, we because we're because why they smell so bad? Listen, I don't understand because we went in one after right. We're like, we're That's like, what we did. It's we're like, we gotta. Get, oh, dude, I was like, <gasps> like it, it, it smelled like shit. It, it smelled, smelled like, like a porta potty. Literally. Yeah, so, anyways, so we do that. We walk all day. We go. Then we go to another park so we can get a better view of the um, of the fireworks. And then it was our one day where we got to stay a little after closing. We got to stay like an hour after closing or whatever. So we do that because you're not going to pass that up. Right. And my dad walking out. I have this hilarious video. My dad cannot walk. And he's just like one step at a time. And it looks like he's getting ready to do the lamest limbo ever. He's just like <laughs> like hugging his, hugging his ass cheeks in like he's fucking Nacho Libre. Just chafed like a motherfucker. He's like, I can't fucking walk. And, you know, big guy. He's like... Fuck, he's like bringing all this attention to him. We're just dying laughing the whole time, all the way to the car. You know at Cedar Point how all the new rides have like the thigh cups and all the new roller coasters? No, I haven't been to Cedar Point in a while. So they used to be like bench seats, like roller coasters yeah, and bench yeah, yeah. seats. Now they're individual seats where like they have molded thighs in them. No way. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you have like a pole right up your crotch suck. where like the, the, like the belt sticks in. Yeah. So they're molded. And I have bigger thighs. Yeah. I'm in like. You're not fitting in them. I fit in them. You did. I fit in them. Like they're big. Like I fit in them. But, but, but I had khaki, khaki shorts on that day, and yeah, my shorts got caught in the edge of the little middle. Well, that's that goes so up. that's my dad's problems. That's all he wears is like khaki and golf shorts. Yeah. But wait, I was, I was sitting there in that thing. thing. My, my shorts, shorts were a little stuck. So the, when we did the first drop. I just I wasn't all the way in the seat yet. Like I fell in. My shorts were caught on something. I go down the first drop. I then get actually into the seat. Pants rip. No, I had oh, a, I do remember. I had that. it rip all the way down the right I side. I do remember of shorts. that. I had to hold it closed the entire that. way out of that place. So excited! That's all I thought about when he said it. Finally, what ride was that? The Ruger. It used to be the Mantis, and they turned it into the Ruger. Remember that now? I, the Ruger. That sounds familiar. The, the, the Mantis is where you stood in a bike seat, and yep. they turned it into the yep. Ruger. So yep. now it's like the same track, but a different yep. brand. Yeah, I don't know. I, I do remember a lot from Cedar Point because I didn't ride a single ride when we went. But we what I did do was my dad and I walked around and we spent money at every single carny game at the place. Really? We spent like almost $100. Way too much money. Almost $100. <laughs> Way too much we money. Did, we did like one round at each one. <laughs> That's insane. And we walked away with like a mini basketball play. That's like, this one. <laughs> we spent like $98 or something. I could just I, imagine. I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. We spent, I could, okay, we spent like 20 on food because we were hungry. Dude, I could so only So we had like imagine. churros and like a fucking if, Slurpee. If I'm a dad, I see. if I'm a dad, I'm paying that money for you to get into the park and then you're like... Yeah, I'm scared of roller coasters. I, everyone knew beforehand. I told everyone well beforehand, I'm not getting on a ride. They knew. They knew because I was so afraid of heights. There was a story, like my, my first time I went hunting, Yeah. Uh, I couldn't get in a tree stand. A tree really? Stand. I couldn't get in. It was the morning hunt. Are, right? you good? Are you good now? No, oh, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, okay, okay. yeah. I'm good now. But like the, the, like, the height thing killed me. Like Now it's like up to like 20 feet, I'm fine. Right. But like if... And like twenty feet with like reasonable beans, I'm not gonna fall. Like if I if I if I built something myself or like right. if someone I knew built something and it's like battle tested, I know that I'm not gonna fall. Fine. But if you got me, I'm not gonna free climb like a rock face fifteen feet, right? I'm not gonna do that. Oh, right. But but like on like a roller coaster I'm not doing it. No way. So you're telling too me too fast, too high, too much movement. You're telling me you don't trust your own company then? What are you talking about? I mean, uh, if I do recall correctly, you didn't you told me the story Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Somebody right. said to you your company essentially not doesn't no but it's the stuff it, that helps the, the place go around right they they sell them all all the stuff that helps automation cedar, yeah that helps cedar point be yeah, cedar yeah. point I, I don't not trust parts i get that i don't doesn't even like if i if, if, even if i was smart enough and i had the means and i i made the top thrill drags for myself oh you just don't want to you couldn't get pay me to get on there unless you paid me it's just the heights you have to pay me good money to get on like if you said i'm paying for your college tuition i'll ride it oh all right, I'm send me to move. <laughs> I'll jump. I told I told um someone before this might have been my dad. Can you I can told, you get on the high dive at like pool parks? What is the high? What, what's the high dive? You don't know what the high? I know, but like what? Like, there's like, different levels. Like the like like the one that's like I don't know the Gross Point. Uh, the only place I've ever been that has a high dive is Gross Point. So I did do Woods Park. I did do the Gross Point Woods slide. Okay, slide. That, what about the higher? What about the higher? 
you don't know what the high dive is? I didn't do any of the dives there. I was never. Oh. I don't dive. There's a. I, I, I didn't have, cannonball you, off. You anywhere. jump off and you cannonball. No, I didn't. It's just. Let me tell you. I'm not afraid of heights. But it's scary. Getting up, get, the, the worst part about it is getting up is fine. But then you get up and you get to the edge and you look down. Yeah. And, and at Gross Point Wood, or yeah, Gross Point Woods Pool Park, there's a vent that is right, like right beneath where, the, you're, jumping in. where you're jumping in. And it just makes it look so much deeper than, like, so much shallower. Shallower and of a like higher jump right because you know when you, you get see more the, depth for something, right yeah know. it's like oh my god like what am i doing like how high am i right now? yeah and then you, rough estimate how, how how tall do you think it was i don't know i'm bad with this sort of thing probably you said yourself how many times these okay whatever i'd probably say probably about 20 25 feet maybe see that's the thing so this is what i was gonna say i told my dad a long time ago i said the, I think the easiest way to break my fear would be to put me in like a helicopter above like a body of water mm-hmm. and just make me either have me jump if I'm willing enough to or push me out, push me out, push me out, push me out like 30 feet above the water <laughs> and just let you push me 30 feet out of the water and see what I do. God, never. I would lie. I would let it happen. Even if you're not, even if you're not afraid of heights, that would be way. scary as shit. You get to push you. Yeah. Yeah. Water that I- Here's the thing. It's yeah. I've, seen, I've, seen, I've seen videos. I've seen videos where people do this. It's like a real thing because I saw it. I was like, um, How much I was because at this point, like in my life, like before I, I could get into the tree stand, I was like, um, like getting upset, right? What's up, Henry? Yeah, and I was like, I was getting upset that like I was afraid of heights with myself. Like, right. I was getting pissed at myself because I was like, okay, all my friends can do this and I have fun doing this, but I just physically can't get myself to do it. So I was like. I was like, you know what, Dad? Like, get me in a helicopter, put me like 25, 30 feet above the like the, the lake or whatever, and literally shove me out, shove me out. I don't know, force my will, uh-huh. like, shove me out of the thing, because I feel like if I had that one time thrill experience where it's like, oh, it's not then bad. You're, then you're like, let's then do I'm it. Fine. Yeah, but I'll tell you what, I did, I did not like um, the idea of roller coasters until I went to Cedar Point one year on a like on a band trip, and. Um, I did the, uh, what's the first one that's not bad at all? Junior Which Gemini. One? The Blue Streak? Nope. The, the wood one? Gemini? The Junior Gemini. No. The double one? Nope, nope, nope. It's like you... The gatekeeper, the I think it was. The gatekeeper. Yeah. That one's not bad at all, right? I mean, it's a little scary. Yeah, when yes. you go the gate. It is the, it's one of the best um, starting roller coasters that you can go on, in my opinion. Yeah. Gemini is pretty, pretty... Like that's like baseline the thing okay. about it is it's so base it's old and it's wood i got you but, but part of it like, like there's, there's an i-beam beam that goes above you that right. looks like You're people gonna my height are gonna fight right yeah no 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 i'm saying i'm saying like the best to break the idea of like oh i'm, I'm scared of heights or whatever because in that would, the gatekeeper you're kind of you, you are a little up there oh and yeah. you are you're up there yeah. and the thing about the gatekeeper is it's like one of those bench ones right where your feet are dangling yeah, it's, it's a winged coaster yeah, yeah it's fuck sweet that. no it's though if you wanted to get me first time going through you'd have to get me on one where i'm in something oh i know like, i couldn't be my feet hanging there. we went no way. when we went to um on the uh wish trip my brother who was four was only was he, he was either nine or ten, right? Because he's eleven now. So was that two years ago? Anyways, nine or ten, and we put him on uh, the Seven Dwarves um, roller coaster as like his first one, and we're like, oh god, let's let's just hope he likes this, or else like it's gonna be a rough couple of days. Kid gets on it, and it's not bad at all. There's no there's no full loops. There's a couple sharp yeah. turns and one like decent sized drop. And he loved it. He was going on, you know, everything uh, at the uh, at both parks because we did Disney and we did Orlando. Yeah, well, I mean, people get addicted to that thrill, right? right? So that's yeah. that's one thing. But like, also, and again, I, in my opinion, sucks because I've literally never owned like on a roller coaster. Right. Why do people pay a hundred dollars for a fast pass to go? On a fucking it makes your day a lot better. No, no, no. Stop, 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 stop. You're talking, I'm taking, you're taking my thing way out of proportion <laughs> on the money thing. I don't care about the money. I do care about the money, but here's my point. Monetarily wise, why do people pay money to go do something like riding a roller coaster? Well, like what's it's like pure what do you mean? when you're on a roller coaster, you've never done it, so you don't know the feeling. I don't, I don't, I know there's thrill, oh. right? But you don't know the feeling, it's adrenaline. But I will I will comment on this. I'm not sure if you're talking. I'm not sure if you're talking like 
why do we like my like, why, 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 why do you make a three hour trip or two hour trip down to Sandusky? Because there's a limited places that you can do something like that. I you, know, but it, it's not there. that special. I don't see how it could be that special to where you're going but to. That's, no, 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 that's no, no, the thing, no, no, no. is it's stop, not stop. that special to you. I know, you. I get that. I admit it to that. But explain to me how someone who doesn't live as close as we do to Cedar Point would ever make an entire trip out of going to Cedar Point. They just have, want you, to. have you taken the have you taken the monetary consideration of what a parent has to do for that trip? Oh, hold on. The question you is, you pay hundred dollars in gas. You pay five hundred dollars for all your family getting them fast passes. You pay fifty dollars. It's, it's, it's not a vacation. It's not a vacation. So here's, here's you're paying question. you're paying almost thousand dollars for what? For no. a fucking roller coaster. No, well, it's uh, my my question for you then is: Is Disney more worth it then, in your opinion? No. But you know, I don't. Like the character aspect? For little kids, I get it. Okay. There's a market for Disney, right? Like, Disney's like this whole thing, like, kids will be. Kids will be going on forever, right? But, like, once you ride Top Thrill Dragster, why do people go back? Like, you're, it's, a, it's, it's a, a money thing. complete pay. rush. It's not a money thing. It's. Like, go skydiving. You're on a coaster and you're doing a drop. You'll never feel like something like that again. It's skydiving. The force. Never feel that. That's more dangerous, though. How is that more dangerous? Skydiving, you can actually die. You can you die can, on a roller coaster. It's more likely to do skydiving. What I'm telling you is, it's a pure adrenaline thing. If you don't like it, you don't like it. You won't right. understand it, though. Right. But for someone who actually likes it, like I like it. I like the feeling of going mm-hmm. like from like an incredibly fast speed down a ramp, and you're getting all those G's on you. It feels like exhilarating. Right, I get that. I get that. It's worth it. I get there's a thrill to it, but what dollar sign would you stop paying for that? Because I think a hundred dollars is well past the point at which I would pay for that. I can't really put a price on it. If you put a fifteen dollar ticket fee to get in, I'd say, oh yeah, sure, that's worth my time. But like, if you said thirty bucks to get in, I go. I go, yeah, all right, my ass. It's all about cost of production, though. That's what I'm saying. Well, it's all all individual cost. They're just in the green now. I'm saying if you can afford to go. It's just the cost. Yeah, you can afford to go. Sure, that's, yeah. that's fine. But I don't really can't really put a price on it. Like, that's really fictional. Right I don't know. now, it's I like a hundred dollars. There's the, a price for everything. Well, yeah, but right now it's a hundred dollars for a fast pass or right. something like that. Right, like I'm okay with that. Or like Henry, he has the. Uh, I think it was a hundred dollars for a gold pass. He has the fast pass every day of the year, anytime he wants. But he got in on that. That's what he has, or it's right. like a park pass or something. Yeah, but it's worth it. Like if you're gonna go do it and you enjoy it. Yeah. If it's worth the money to, it's worth the money to. But if it's something crazy, like $500, obviously they're not going to do it. Well, that's what it is, though. But it's not. It is for the experience. Yeah. But to get in the park for your pa- fast pass, it's like 100 bucks. Right. If you're going to go stay there, well, now you're paying well, for your place you're, you're going to That's stay. what I'm saying. That's if you're going to teleport there out of thin air, right? But you got to include expenses. I'm just saying, like, yeah, like Disney's a great thing. Why do people go to Disney more than twice in a lifetime? Well, they're first, different. First, it's your first time. Experience. Second, because you're going to see everything you didn't see the first time. Yeah, I right. don't really like. But you can go to you can go to Cedar Point and you can go on every single ride if you have a fast pass and then be done. Yeah, um, but it's the same adrenaline. You can hundred percent. You can hundred percent. Yeah, yes. it's doable. I've, I've it's, had fast pass. it's so it's doable. So nice. It's so doable. Every time I've went, I'll never go to Cedar Point again without a fast pass. Right. The it's totally. I get it. So when you're going on something, all, all the line I know is, is that like four hours. I don't long. know if I ever want to go back to to um, Universal or to Disney because when I went. I had the super fast pass of having a kid with no hair next to me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that sounds so bad. But, you know, um, Universal and Disney both. Universal more than Disney um, because Disney just has that kind of volume. They cater to you, man. I mean, at Disney, um, we would go and we had this little badge. So you, you would go to, like, the fast pass, but the fast pass still had a line, right? And it was always much shorter than the actual line but you still had to wait for a little bit at universal you would literally go and like when the person that's there counting people would see you and they go they would radio someone the, an escort would come up to you and they go hey do you want to uh see behind the scenes or do you just want to get right on the ride and depending on how big of a rush you were in you could be like oh i just want to go get right on the ride and they take you behind the ropes up an elevator and boom, put you on the very next ride. Wow, dude, it was insane. I that's crazy. That's why I said I'm never gonna be able to go back because you I was have to experience what everyone else has to. I I'm gonna have to see it from how it really is. That's what I'm saying. Like yeah, like from that standpoint. If you look at Cedar Point as the ticket entrance without the fast pass, you're kind of either I get it, you can't afford it, or you're kind of just a fool. If you're spending the money to go there, 
Why not get the fast pass? That's what I'm saying. I was saying is if you literally, if it came down to the, you could only afford to get there, get back, and get the regular pass, I get it. Yeah. But if if you're going to go and you can and you can we afford can it. Figure it out. So the te- basically the gate price is $100 if you look at oh, it that way. I don't know. That's not exactly, but yeah. It's 95 but It's different for around. Disney. Disney's for different. Us, Disney's so much least. different. It's so much different. But it's also different for us, though, because we're closer to Cedar Point. But, like, Get into the mic, man. Disney's Disney's a whole different animal. Yeah, but well, for me, I might want to go again. Maybe I would go to Disney again. I'm, like it's a fun experience. I would make a trip out of it though. I, like, no, my kids, I might. No, no, I would go. If I go again, I'm not going just for Disney. No, if you know, if I go again, it's a trip to Florida in a day or two. Is Disney. gonna be. Disney. I'll go to like Magic Kingdom for a day. That's Frost what they get you though. That's there. what they get you though. Is that you can't like. You can't you see can't all of them in one day. In a day. If you go to Magic Kingdom, you get more than enough. I know Magic, King, Magic Kingdom. Um, looking back, the only one that I didn't go to, just because we didn't think it was all that, was uh, we didn't go to Epcot. That's Epcot the one. Was my second favorite. Epcot's one. dope. No, I bet Epcot. Epcot's no, that's so what I'm dope. saying. But like for Epcot. Epcot. No, Epcot. Who said that? Was it me that said that? You. Both of us. I think it was you. All did. It. I Epcot. I think it was you that started it though, and then you guy started me saying it. Epcot. And they called it Epcot. Epcot. No. Um. But looking back on it, I think Epcot would be the one that I would want to hit first. And then uh but if you had to only hit one, yes, Magic Kingdom is arguably the best one to go to. Well, just because you get do, so much. The only, I dislike Florida for a lot of reasons. Yeah. It's just not the place yeah, I pass like. all those points, keep going. Yeah. But I just don't like the weather, I don't like the community, I don't like okay. the people, I don't like keep the going. place. Okay, so keep pass going. All those points. Yeah, we said we said jump just, those yeah. points. I only want to go for Magic Kingdom and the Star Wars. I want to make my own lightsaber. Yeah, okay. That's all I want to I do. I want to go to Epcot and spend a day there because Epcot is awesome. You're an industrial engineer. You get to work there. Good. Or um, I want to go to spring training games in Lakeland. Those are good, too. Those that's are good. ES- all they ESPN do. World that's also owned by Disney is pretty sick. Yeah, that's true. But... Yeah. Um, how old are we running at, boys? Uh, we're at two hours and one minute. We could call it there. Um, yeah, I just want to wrap up a few notes. You guys are all done with that conversation, right? Everyone good? Yeah. Um, yeah, so uh, I know it's only our, our, only our second podcast, but I think we all agree that if someone or people had, like, that we're friends with or we know or whatever would like to be a guest on the podcast, I think that'd be fun to do. Um, just yeah. text us if you have our socials already or you know dm us on instagram or whatever um or if you have fun. ideas or you know anything oh, yeah, if you have really. any comments or suggestions uh, comments or suggestions anything one thing that's really nice about starting out if you're listening to us um obviously we're really easy to reach uh because you know we're, we're not down big. to earth we're just people yeah right? we're just regular people and the people that are actually most watching us right now most, are of, your, our friends. most yeah. of your friends related or no or you know person of knowledge of those people and if and if you're two hours and two minutes in i'm willing to bet you somewhat are interested in what we have to say yeah maybe not a ton but we do have an empty we, chair right here though uh, we, appre- we'd like to fill. we yeah. appreciate you say, sticking around for two hours uh you know if you can help us get our name out there that'd be great uh, like, comment, share, whatever, whatever yeah. they say. Absolutely. But, right. um, but I think that'll be it, guys. Yeah. So, so thank Sunday you. Night. Episode two.